Houston, we do have a problem. The Arrows have just one win in their existence against the Utah Grizzlies. Although there is no Craig Fisher to contend with anymore, Houston will still have a bear of a time keeping the puck out of their net. It's the Arrows and the Grizzlies next on 51. the Delta Center in Salt Lake City, Utah. The Arrows take on the two-time defending Turner Cup champion, Utah Grizzlies. A very pleasant good evening and welcome to the Delta Center. I'm Adam Gordon. The Arrows coming off a very impressive 2-1 win in a shootout Wednesday night at the Summit over the Phoenix Roadrunners. And you go to the highlights from that hockey game. What a wild one. It came to the goaltenders. Freddie Shabbat on Jason Morgan. And then J.C. Bergeron on Mark Fur. But sometimes he needed help. How about this save by Brad Tiley? But then Chris Marinucci tried it once again at Shabbat up to the task. So the Arrows looked to Mark Fear to get it within a one. He could not. And then it was Rob Balasevic in the third period, banging one by Bergeron. And we were tied at one, and that would send it to a shootout. The Arrows led 1-0 in the shootout, and then Mark Lamb put the screws to the Roadrunners, giving him a 2-0 lead. And then Freddie Shabbat, this save on Michelle Mangeau, and the Arrows defeat the Roadrunners by a score of 2-1. And you go to the Southwest Division standings, the Arrows just one point back of Utah and Las Vegas in that Southwest Division. And as I bring in my broadcast, partner Troy Gamble. This is a very important weekend. All three games on the road. The Arrows play here tonight and then Monday and then tomorrow night they're in Phoenix. Some very important contests. Well and it all starts here tonight Adam. You talk about the Arrows and the Utah Grizzlies. The Arrows are 1-9-1 and one against the Grizzlies. They need to find a way to beat this Grizzly team and tonight would be a great way to start this big long weekend. The Arrows haven't needed a lot of offense as of late. Their system really doesn't even call for it that much. And sometimes it's guys with their play away from the puck. And the Arrows have looked to Mark Freer for that all year. Well, he's been terrific, Adam. He has been spectacular defensively. He's been holding his man, taking his man all the way to the net. He's been very good offensively. Also, you can look at him in the last seven games. He has eight points. He's scoring goals. He's driving hard to the net. He's doing everything that he can to score goals. And he's just been Dave Tippett's best forward. Well, the Utah Grizzlies have had their problems as well. This is a team that got off to a very hot start. But one guy that seems to be the spark plug for him this year is a guy that started the year in San Jose, Ray Whitney. Well, and he played all last year in San Jose. He had 41 points in 60 games. He played very well for him. This year, he is a Grizzly, and he is the spark plug. I talked to Mark Lamb before the game, and I said, hey, Mark, does anyone scare you on the Grizzlies? One name, Ray Whitney. The Arrows are going to have to be careful of this guy. All right. Coming up, the opening face-off, the Arrows and the Utah Grizzlies. We'll have that for you right after this. Houston Arrows Hockey on KNWS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. With low fares on every seat, every flight, every day. And by Columbia Healthcare. Healthcare has never worked like this before. And by your local Texas Chrysler Plymouth Dodge Jeep and Eagle dealers. Test drive one today. And by Whataburger, the homegrown Texas thing since 1950. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Delta Center. Along with Troy Gamble, Adam Gordon with you. As we get set for what should be an outstanding contest, the Arrows taking on the two-time defending Turner Cup champion, Utah Grizzlies, and it's time to take a look at tonight's Gamble game plan. Well, the Arrows must start better, Adam. The last five, six games, they've started very slow. If they're going to have success tonight, they have to start a lot better. The Arrows forwards against the Grizzlies D. This is going to be a great matchup. The Utah Grizzlies defense are very big. The Arrows forwards, if they are aggressive, if their forwards are aggressive, like Al Conner getting in there, using his strength, driving hard to the net, they're going to have a lot of success because the Grizzlies defense are not real physical and then capitalize on their chances. They've only scored 12 goals in 11 games against the Grizzlies all time. They have to score on their chances tonight. 
We are ready to start tonight's face-off. Al Conroy with Mark Freer and Al May. Defensively, Dave Basicchio and Darcy Rowanka. They'll go up against the line of Chris Taylor with Sylvain No and Ray Whitney. And we are underway as John Potter's our referee, Jim Tedesco and Brian Stack, the linesman. We're underway and it's Freer back in his own end. Shoulder down at center, left at wing. And here is Taylor trying to knock it free. Pasigio went back and got it back to his own blue line. Here's Rowanka cranked the puck into the Grizzly zone. Freer trying to dig it out. He sent it a pass, but it was intercepted by Whitney, and he's out at center. Ray Whitney across the arrow line. It was chipped away by Rowanka. Whitney got it back in the corner. Whitney behind the net, takes a hit from Conroy. Rolled it along the boards, and it was loosened up, taken by Freer. Gordonine gets it back for Utah, trying to shovel it in. That was picked away by Basigio. Put it to the boards, right at center and into the Grizzly zone. Rod Miller going back, takes a hit from Almay, the former Grizzly. Puck came by up behind the net, and it's Gordonine. A cross-ice pass, missing everybody, and Jakes will go back and take over for the Arrows. Just about a minute gone in the opening period. We are scoreless from the Delta Center. Gordonine in behind his net, rolled the puck over to Rod Miller. Miller had to go back to get it. Arrows into four check, and here is Sylvain No. Moved it up the boards, out at center for Levers. One of the team leaders with 17 goals. Puck is out at center. Curl, but knocked it down, and it's an offsides call. Frederick Shabbat starting in goal tonight for the Houston Arrows in his last 21 games, 15-5-1, a 1.81 goals against average, 94% on his save percentage. He's allowed 38 goals on just 631 shots at that time. He'll go up against Mark MacArthur, a fifth round pick by the New York Islanders, and finally time for him to be in the spotlight after Tommy Salo had it not only the first year, which MacArthur was not a part of in Denver, but last year, uh, he gets to back up Tommy Salo. Dave Tippett behind the bench, thought that Phoenix was a really improved hockey club from what he noticed uh, Wednesday, thought they were a big team, and that's what was kind of the key, how the Earls would handle the big D tonight. Well, and the fours need to be aggressive. If they are aggressive against that D, they are big, but they are very soft. Puck is back into Arrow territory, but it was quickly rejected to center. And here is Joby Messier in his own end. He is the cousin of Mark Messier of the Rangers. Messier, right side at center, put the puck into the Arrow end. Hurl, but scampered back to play. He will move it up the boards. He was attacked by Sean O'Brien, but he got the puck ahead. And here is Lamb, right at center, shoot the puck in. There was MacArthur to swat it away. They battle in the corner. And it's loosened up, here come the arrows. Looking in front, Lamb, Hurlbutt winding, shooting, deflected wide. In after it, O'Brien, but Lamb with the first one there. In the fire circle, Levers takes a heavy hit from Townsend. It's picked up by Lamb. Back along, here's Hurlbutt, faked the shot, scooped it down, Townsend centered, it was blocked by MacArthur. 17.47 to go in the first period, a scoreless hockey game from the Delta Center. Here is Jeff Strapples for Utah, it's rolled out at neutral ice, and the Arrows get it right back. Great start for the Arrows. Their forechecking seems to be working very well. Here comes Houston Lamb trying to split the defense, and Rod Miller takes over for the Grizzlies. Two and a half gun in the opening period. Scoreless hockey game, and it's Jim Dowd rumping out at center. Fired the puck into the arrow end. Balamont going back to play the bouncing puck in the corner. Carl Balamont takes the hit. Arrows trying to move it out. Balasevic hemmed in along the boards. Good battle in there, one by Dowd, but Balamont took it back. Gets the puck over to Lorne Knopf, and the arrows look to clear, but it's intercepted. Here's Dowd, slipped it down. It came down low, and it's pushed away by Balamont, trying to clear it. It's to the line and out at center ice. Deneen swept it in, but the arrows get it right back. Three on two, they will come to center. Balamont leads the rush. The pass is offsides, and play is whistled down. Three minutes into the first, and we're scoreless from the Delta Center. Scoreless with three minutes gone in the first period from the Delta Center. And let's send it down to the Arrows bench. Rob Dobson. Dobber, what is Dave Tippett's game plan into this one? Well, you know, Adam, I think with a team that's changed his players as much as Utah has, you know, with 55 transactions since the beginning of the season, it's kind of tough to establish a game plan. And Tibbs, uh, knowing that we haven't seen a lot of these guys since the last time we played them, and it's, it's a new team, basically, just to be attention to detail, you know, win our face-offs, watch the blue lines, tough on our own zone, and most importantly, get the, tuck, the puck in deep and work it down deep in their end. And, and most importantly, just play a good sound road game, and that's what we're looking for this evening. Dauber, really quickly, you like the first three minutes here? Yeah, it's exactly what we wanted. We want to get it deep and get pressure on their D, just to kind of see what they're going to bring towards us. And, 
and really start to take the play of the game and not shy down. So it's a good start for us. Thank you very much, Dauber. The puck is in the arrow end. In after it, it was Bill Bowler. He'll fling the puck out at center. Grizzlies are back, and Deneen drifting back to his own blue line. Handed over to Rod Miller, put it to the boards. Out at center. That's controlled there by Patrick Dunn. Intercepted by Bowler. He had to retreat to his blue and a cross ice pass for Knopf. He'll hit the line. Knopf trying to move right into that goal, but it was swept away by Deneen. In there was Balasevic trying to move it along the boards. That's picked away, and it's shelled out at center. Scoreless game, four minutes gone in the first period. Here come the Grizzlies. Rod Miller, the drive, and he whistled it wider than that. Freer gathered it in along the board, put it up center ice for Bill Bowler, in across the line. Bowler trying to drop it back for the trailing Al May. May sent it a pass, here's the chance. Freer in the shot and a stick save made by MacArthur. And a penalty coming up as Freer got clipped with a high stick and I think the arrows are gonna go on their first power play of the night. I believe it's gonna be Rod Miller going off for the high stick on Mark Freer. If Mark's cut, that could be a four minute or a five minute penalty. Uh, he looks fine, so two-minute penalty on Miller for the high stick on Mark Freer. And he just gets his stick up. Mark Freer had just taken the shot, and he was trying to whack the puck out of the air instead of hitting the puck. He looks like he hits Mark Freer on the tip of the nose. Mark looks OK. So Rod Miller in the box for high sticking, and the arrow's on the power play. They are 15th in the IHL at 15.4%. Grizzlies near dead last, 18th in the IHL, and there's Butch Goring. What a quote he had on winning the last three in a row. Butch Goring saying, you know, we started to do some things that'll make us successful, and hopefully we'll keep doing them, and we can pick up some steam heading toward the playoffs, and when it comes to playoffs, you know the Grizzlies are there. Well, the Grizzlies are there, and when Butch Goring was in the play, he was a Conn Smythe winner. He was an MVP of playoffs. He knows playoff pressure. Well, he had a, a bevy of trophies we can go over later, as now the Arrows commence the first power play of the night. Puck along the boards. Deneen wrestled it away, give it over to Jim Dowd. He'll skate it out at center. Here's a three-on-two short-handed rush, and the puck is put into Arrow territory. Back to play where Wanka smacked it down low, and the Arrows will take over. Dave Vesicio in his own end. He'll lead the charge. Arrows move it right to left in this period. Vesicio at center. Fire the puck into the Grizzly end. Sharples going back. A fine offensive defenseman. Trying to move on ahead. It was tipped away, and LaRose loosened it up along the boards for the Arrows. Guy LaRose, a good bit of stick handling, drifting back to the point. Hands it back down for Conroy. It rolled off his stick. He's tied up along the boards, which shook off the check. It came down low. Here is Lamb. The pass for LaRose. We're five minutes into the first. Still no score. Arrows a minute 18 on the power play. Mark Lamb at the point. He's got Rowenka in the slot as well as Conway. Sends it back. Besiege, you lost it. It's out at center ice. Tried to shoot it a little too quick, and the puck bounced over his stick. Arrows quickly regrouped, though. Put it back to the line. Here's the drive. Right on. Save made by MacArthur. Rowenka, a big shot. And that was kicked away by Sharples, and the puck is out at center. Some fine penalty killing by the Grizzlies. Very aggressive all over the arrows, challenging them every time they get the puck. Vesigio back at his own end. Here comes Werlenka. He'll scamper it right at center. He'll crank the puck in. It'll go wide to MacArthur in after it. It's Graham Townsend with 40 to go on the power play. Hurl but bumped it back down for Freer. Hands it to Townsend in the Grizzly zone. Trying to cycle the puck down low. Came back to the line though for Hurl, but he sets up on the power play, which has half a minute to go. Freer behind the cage for Lamb. Cuts in. Here's a chance. Freer shooting. Save MacArthur. Stay away at it. And Mark MacArthur with a couple of terrific saves, and he will hold on. Great saves by Mark MacArthur, staying down low on the puck. Mark Freer trying to go up high, just cannot lift the puck over Mark MacArthur. Excellent. Watch, Sheva Turkin had lost his stick. He did not have the defense, but he was trying to get his stick, and Mark Freer realizing that stayed with the puck. Sheva Turkin comes flying over. Hitting Mark Freer, he cannot get the puck up top. Mark Freer, excellent shot there. MacArthur staying down low. Very good job by both Mark Freer and the goalkeeper. 21 seconds remaining in the arrow power play as Mark MacArthur, he's started the last three and won the last three. Part of that 7-3 win Wednesday night against Chicago where they dominated him. Here's a puck on the power play, controlled by Mark Freer. Sets up at the top of the circle, scooped it down for Bill Bowler. Power play down to 13 seconds. Freer looks in behind the cage. He is watched along the boards there by Joby Messier. The puck is shot out at center. It'll go back into the arrow, and Valamont's got to hustle back. He's got Sean O'Brien on his face. But it's picked up by the arrows, and it's right back out at center ice. Freer, as the penalty's over, teams at five aside. Puck goes in, MacArthur's right there to scoop it up. And he looks for a man to pass to, and he'll swat it right over to Sylvain Moe. 
Pass intercepted by Yo. Couldn't bring it ahead, and it's back to neutral ice. Sharples bumped off the puck, brought it across the line. Chris Taylor trying to drop it back for No. Intercepted, arrows back, and here is Graham Townsend, and he smartly put it to the boards, and he fired it out at center. 13 minutes, 17 seconds to go in the opening period from the Delta Center, and a good start by the Houston Arrows, but still no score. Sylvain No for the Grizzlies, barreling in, sends the pass. Taylor knocked down by Knopf, and a penalty coming up to Lorne Knopf. 13.05. To go, we'll take a time out and bring you the Grizzly power play when we return. Well, I guess the arrows putting in the box, Lauren off. Well, and he took the penalty on Taylor, who got the puck in the center of the uh, face-off dot. Lauren off challenged him, got his leg out, could not do it. Dave Tippett now hoping that his penalty killing unit does a great job. And you were talking about the special teams of the Utah Grizzlies. They have not been very good. Well, why? Look at all the player personnel. 55 players. That's unbelievable. Too many players. You just cannot generate your power play and penalty killing unit. Tough to really work them. Lauren Knopf in the penalty box. Just got a little over aggressive on Taylor, and that's pretty easy to do. But she going the sport in the glasses. I haven't seen that yet this ever. That's the first time he was one of my coaches and I never saw him with glasses. No. Nope. So we start the first power play for the Utah Grizzlies in a scoreless hockey game and here they come. A pass out at center. Buck is rolled in by Patrick Dunn. He'll come behind Frederick Shabani, but failed to control it. It went over to Al Conroy. He'll move the puck up on the boards and it's back down the ice. Great job by Al Conroy. The puck was high up on the glass. He threw his body, knocked it down and then shot it all the way down the ice. Here come the Utah Grizzlies. It goes into the Arrow territory. Ray Whitney digs it out, looped it behind. Jake's put it up for Mark Lamb, and he scooped it out at center just too far for LaRose. Ah, turned around. Here is Patrick Dunn, dropped it back for a trailing Jim Dowdy, sent it a pass back to the line for Taylor. Taylor rolled it down for Ray Whitney. Whitney tied up along the boards. 105 remaining in the power play. Here's a puck top of the slot. Joby Messier, cross ice pass. Whitney sets up along the fireboards. Looks in front. He's got Patrick Dunn along the doorstep, but instead it came back to the line. Taylor winding, shooting, and that was deflected just wide. The Rose can't gulf it out of the end. Patrick Dunn had that knifed away. Came back down for Whitney. Takes a hit from Basigio, and there is Jakes who put it to the glass and back down the ice. Good physical play by Dave Basigio, allowing Steve Jakes all that time to shoot it down. That's going to be the key on Ray Whitney. He's not the easiest guy to catch, but if you can catch him, you got to hit him. Well, when he was on the half walls there, two arrows went to him. They're going to force him all night. Joby Messier fired the puck into arrow territory. Bill Bowler back to play it, shoveled it along the boards. He was hit by Sharples. Puck poked along, arrows can't clear, held in by O'Brien. Second effort, Mike Yo couldn't clear it, and the puck back down. Here's the puck controlled by Jan Kaminsky. Back to the line, Sharples. Sharples cross eyes to Messier. Give it to Kaminsky. He looks in front for O'Brien. Back to the line. The drive right on. And a left pad save. Beat by Shabbat. Penalty is over. And back out on the ice is Lorne Knopf. Puck is intercepted by Basigio. And he will come out at center. Across the line, Basigio, but Knopf ahead of the play. We will take a break. 11 minutes to go in the first. And we're scoreless from the Delta Center. We are a little over nine minutes into the first period scoreless hockey game, and you can bring your church group, your employees club, your softball team, or any squadron of 20 or more for an evening of fast-paced Arrows hockey action. Call 627-AERO for details. Houston Arrows hockey is sports the way it ought to be. Underway with play once again, and it's Gord Deneen, the mighty defenseman. This guy has played a lot of hockey, 179 consecutive games now. For the Grizzlies, a true Iron Man. Puck is out at center for Levers across the arrow line, trying to cut in. He shoots, stopped by Shabbat. Puck came back to the line. Deneen cuts it over. Here's the drive by Shabbat, turning right on, and Shabbat sticks it aside. Levers trying to dig it out, moves it back. He's fell, fallen to the ice, and we've got another penalty. And I'm not so sure if he just didn't lose his balance. I don't know if Conroy caught him here. Well, a lot of times the players, when they're making those sharp, sharp turns, they catch a rut in the ice and they go for a spill. They're going to catch Al May. Yeah, it wasn't Conroy that caught him. That's why he didn't. Yeah, and it, Al May just kind of put his stick on him, and he was circling up. It looked like he was going to try to throw it back to the point. And as he makes this sharp turn, Al May just puts his stick on him. Oh, that's, that's questionable, but 
You know, Alme got his stick in there maybe a little bit too far. That's what he's called on. The former Grizzly who won the Turner Cup with Butch Goring squad last year, now playing for Dave Tippett. So Alme in the box. This will be the second power play of the night for the Utah Grizzlies. 10.28 to go. In the first, Faceoff in the arrow end, and Houston wins the draw. Pearl, but going back to play, put it to the boards. It's to the line and out at center, and Messier takes over. Sharples in his own blue, the pass ahead for Kaminsky, and it'll go into arrow territory. They say no icing. Puck put to the boards once again, and Freer couldn't clear it. The second effort has popped the neutral ice. Now the Grizzlies power play tonight, talking to Butch Goring, they're going to shoot it from the point a lot. They've been struggling. He feels that's the best way for them to get the power play going again. Well, and Butch Goring made no bones about it. He thinks Freddie Shabbat's the best in the eye right now. MVP. Here is Brett Levers trying to cut in, and Conroy popped it right back down the ice. 125 left in May's penalty. 9.50 to go in the first, no score. Gordonine in his own end. Sends the puck over to Ray Whitney. He'll cut it back over to Deneen, and Deneen will look for a little refuge behind the cage and bust out with it. Team captain Gord Deneen, been with the Grizzlies for all three years and been part of both Turner Cup championships. Puck came down for Whitney. He loosened it up right in with a backhander, and Shabbat got a blocker on it. It turned to the corner, and Lamb will move up with it. Mark Lamb, short and just going for a little skate to kill off some time, and he will come to the left and center and shoot it down the ice. 49 seconds remaining in the arrow penalty, and Gordon Deneen back in behind his net, and here come the Grizzlies. Deneen the pass out at center. Taylor cross ice Whitney as he gained the line. Whitney the pass, broken up. Whitney got it back. Here's Taylor center. Oh, he had a beautiful pass, and Whitney nearly able, nearly able to put it in there, and actually it was Patrick Dunn. 19, not 14, Whitney. Here's Lamb across the line, long drive, and that is deflected up over the glass and out of play. 20. Five seconds remaining in the Denver, the Utah Grizzly penalty. No score, 8.53 to go. Good look up, Mark MacArthur. Hey, you know, Adam, he started the year 8-0-1. Now has won his last three. He's been very streaky. And that's a, he was goalie of the month for the month of November. He was excellent. Started off and then kind of went in a slump. And it all started when Sutterstrom came. Maybe he felt a little heat, but now he's starting to play and Butch scoring. He, he had the great quote saying, I believe Mark MacArthur has found his confidence. He played very well last game against Chicago, and he hopes that he's back on top. Well, he thought that it was the best game, the 7-3 the three, three win was the best game he played in a while. Well, he had struggled for so long, it, it could only get better. <laughs> Here is Jeff Sharp with a cross line. Long shot and a glove save made by Frederick Shabbat with 11 seconds left in the penalty to Alan May. Frederick Shabbat tonight is going to see a lot of Jeff Sharple shooting the wrist shot. He has one of the best wrist shots in the league. Just watch his quick release here. And that is what makes it so dangerous. He pulls it in and snaps. And Frederick Shabbat had to be very sharp with his goalie glove there, as Jeff Sharples is known to have the best snapshot in the IHL, and there is a great example, great replay of Freddie Shabbat making a difficult save that on most players would be an easy save. Sharples had a goal and two assists Wednesday night in the 7-3 win over Chicago. And he remains on the ice. A shot stuck aside by Shabbat. And again, the puck slicing up over the glass and out of play with five seconds remaining in the power play. And a good look at Frederick Shabbat, who obviously is continuing with his terrific play. Freddie Shabbat, how about this in his last four games? Three goal and one. A 1.75 goals against average. 95.1 save percentage. But how about this, Troy? He has now got 25, 23 wins rather, which is now by far the Arrows team record, breaking yours, Troy, of 18. Well, he, he didn't break it, he smashed it. And he still has another 20 games to play, like at least. Here's Miller from the point, that shot deflected away. All of a sudden now, the Grizzlies have carried the play a little bit here. It hasn't hurt that they've had a couple of power plays as well. Puck is on its center ice, turned away by the Grizzlies. Will cry, cry and put it into arrow territory, but that was directed out by Hurlbutt. And Joby Messier is back. Puck loose at center, taken by Kaminsky, fired it into arrow territory, but Houston is back with 8.08 to go in the first. Still no score. The puck is into Utah Grizzly territory. MacArthur put it to the boards. In there was Messier. He slides it down. Here's Freer behind the net, tied up by Miller. Freer trying to go to work. He lost the puck, and Levers will romp out with it. Brett Levers out at center. Levers gains the line. Levers right in, and he 
it was shoveled off by Macedo. Here's Makota. Takes a hit from Jakes. They get tied up, and Nick Makota, not a guy you want to get fired up too much. He looks at Jakes. Are they going to go? Jakes might go with him behind the play. And the puck is picked up by the Grizzlies, and Sheba Turkin is there. They're still looking at each other, and now Morissette looking at Makota. I think we're going to see a dance here before it's all said and done. Puck is in the arrow end. Here's a chance, a big collision from a shot. Hits your butt as Vakoda and Jakes getting into it. I don't know, Vakoda taking a swipe at Jakes, and they continue to look at each other, and I think John Potter is going to separate him and put him into the box. Timeout on the ice, things are heating up for the Delta Center. We remain scoreless. Scoreless hockey game, and Steve Jakes along with Mick Vakoda in the penalty box, and you want to know why? Here's why. Well, you can just look how physical it's getting in front of the net. And then Mick Fakota almost takes this puck in the, well, it almost looks like he does in top of the helmet. Very lucky that he had a helmet on. But after that, they got into it, mixed it up a little bit, and they both go off for two minutes. So we'll go four on four for a couple of minutes in the arrows. Dave Asicio fired it over, a cross ice pass taken back, and there's Chris Taylor. Send it over to Sharples in the arrows into Portrait, but the puck is out at center. Here come the Grizzlies. Messier chipped it ahead. That went back to the arrow line, and Houston takes over. Roika. A D to D pass, and it's Basicio out at center. The Arrows with a three on two rush. Slam across the line. Taken to the boards by Messier. LaRose in there, tied up by Ray Whitney. LaRose shook off the check. Here's LaRose, looks in front. Still with a puck, trying to head it down for Rolenka. Sharples is there. And it's back out at center ice. Great job by Jeff Sharple. Sharples greeting the switch, then knocking Guy LaRose off the puck. Mark Lamb back in his zone in with a minute nine to go. In the four-on-four four situation. Pasijo, nice pass for Lamb. He cuts in, shooting MacArthur the save. Lamb still behind that, trying to shake off a Messier hit. And it was picked up by Taylor. And here come the Grizzlies on at center, two on two. Taylor with Whitney. Taylor and Rainey on goal. He shoots and missed it to the short side. Taylor flipped it to Ray Whitney. Whitney waiting, trying to circle a nice move to try and get around Rolenka. The puck is picked up by Taylor. Back to the line. Deneen shoveled it down. Chris Taylor. Taylor, watched by Basigio. Whitney center, blocked by Shabbat, and it was flicked away by Basigio, and it's out at center ice. Bill Bowler hits the line, arrows offsides, and the faceoff brought back to center with 5.39 to go in the first period, and we are scoreless. There are 26 seconds remaining in the Vakoda and Jake's Miners. And what a physical game early on, and that's why Mick Vakota is in the penalty box. Both teams standing up to each other behind the play. A lot of physical stuff going on, a lot of grappling. This is just a hard drive to the net by Taylor going around Basigio, but he had nowhere to go. Dave Basigio cutting him off at the net, forcing him to shoot wide. Puck is back in the Grizzly zone. And Gordon Deneen is there, and here come the Grizzlies. A puck put to the boards. It's turned away Kaminsky as he ran into Malamont. Puck shoveled back in for Rod Miller, and the Arrows have to scamper back. It will be icing as Hurl, but goes back. And no, they say no icing. They waved it off. Arrows gather in the puck. Here is Bill Bowler. He will come out and center as the penalties are over to Jakes and to Lakota. Bowler trying to cut right in. Nice move. He shoots as he was chopped down. No penalty. Looked over at John Potter. Potter said no. Levers, left at center, shoot the puck into the arrow end. Yo going back, he's watched by Kaminsky. Yo trying to skate away, moved it up the boards, but a pass, intercepted by Sharple, sends it over, here is Jim Down. Had it in the skates and had to regroup. Jimmy Down put the puck along the boards for Sharples. Sharples centered and hit a skate, now the shot by O'Brien. What a look, bad save, made by Shabbat. He stoned O'Brien in front, and the puck is picked up by Hurlba. What a save. Back is Joby Messier in his own end. It came down to the corner. Conroy loosened it up for the Arrows. Hands it over to Yo. He tried to move it down. The puck was in front, but the Grizzlies get it out at center. Lakota chased it down right side, trying to move in, but no. Nah. He rolled it away, and the Arrows turn it around with 4.19 to go in the period. Still no score. Alan May bumped off the puck, and here comes uh, Grizzly Rush, but Jake stalled it. Lakota trying to move in. He and Conroy hard to the boards, and Conroy takes the puck away. 
Al Conway for the Arrows takes a heavy hit from Mick Bakota. Puck is jumped on by the Arrows. They come out with Lord Knopf leading the charge down the right side with Yo. Knopf pulls up at the point. Knopf sends to Yo. Couldn't redirect it on goal. Ian Dowd hard to the boards to the left of uh, MacArthur. Jimmy Dowd came away with a puck, and here come the Utah Grizzlies, and up ice they will come. 3.45 to go in the opening period. Still no score. We've had some pretty good action here. Here's Jimmy Dowd. He shoots. That was blocked. Never made it to Shabbat. Sylvain No in the corner, two time by a couple of arrows, but here's Ray Whitney, some deft stick handling along the board. He scooped it down for No, but he was met by Conroy. No win the battle though, give it to Taylor, the shot right on. Shabbat made the save, lock in behind that. Jake's tumbled on top of it, and he will draw a whistle, and that will draw a timeout on the ice. 3.22 to go. Here in the first, we're scoreless. Hockey game, 322 to go in the first. We send it down to the Arrows bench and Rob Dobson. Dobbert's gotten physical. Yeah, Adam, I think both teams realize how important this weekend is. You know, for us, we have three games in our division and they have the two against us here. And, you know, this is a big thing. Both teams are kind of log jammed there around 51 points. So it's important both ways. You know, we took those two penalties and we haven't quite got going offensively, but we look forward to start here the last three minutes or so. Off the face off. Here is Graham Townsend. He'll put the puck to Lamb. It goes into the Grizzly zone. Chris Taylor in after, but Townsend beat him to the puck for Lamb. He overskated, but got it back. Lamb, good work. Here's Townsend. Loosened it up, but he was met by Taylor. Skate to skate along the boards to the left of Mark MacArthur. Black is controlled by Gayla Rose. Shook off a check from Taylor. Cuts in the shot. He whistled it just wide of that. Held in Besigio. Shot redirected by Lamb just wide. Pushed along the boards and Whitney came, came back to take it. Pushed the puck ahead for Sylvain No, and it's back to center. 2.45 to go in the opening period. A scoreless hockey of the shots 11-3. But I don't think those are indicative. And by the way, in favor of the Grizzlies, those shots not indicative of how well the Arrows have played in this period. Well, and Rob Dobson said it perfectly. Those uh, power, power plays of the Grizzlies have hurt the Arrows. They need to get back onto their game plan here. Here's a pass that came to Hurl, but sets up at the left point. Tees it up, shoots, deflected right on. The save is made, rebound. Broken up by Miller. Here come the Grizzlies out at center. They've got it three on two. The pass broken up by Jakes, and the Rose will turn it around. He needed a line change. He'll shovel it down. It will be an icing call, but he, the Rose, needed a line change, and play is whistled down. Two oh three to go in this first period. Scoreless hockey game. And they'll bring a face off to the right of Frederick Shabbat as Mark MacArthur, some great saves. Well, a couple of huge saves down there. And I was going through his bio, he said Andy Moog is his here. He actually looks like Andy Moog when he plays. This is just a great shot from Mike Curl, but the puck's in behind him. Great job by that defense of the Grizzlies to block out the Arrows players trying to put the puck by him. Two pretty contrasting styles, Mark MacArthur and Freddie Shabbat. Well, yeah, and when we talk about Mark MacArthur and Andy Moog, they're both stand-up. You're going to watch him stand up a lot more than that guy, Frederick Shabbat. And a face-off to the right of Frederick Shabbat in the arrow, and Bill Bowler will take the draw. A scoreless hockey game with 2.03 to go in the first. Bowler against Brett Levers. Off the draw. And the puck is controlled by Levers in the corner. Levers trying to cut in, and here's a penalty coming up as Bowler got chopped down. A hooking minor coming up. And the arrows, for the most, most part, will get the full two minutes. There's 1.56 left in the period, so they'll have enough time here to go to work on the power play. Well, Jan Kaminsky gave Bill Buller the old hook a ram up. Bill Buller was trying to go out and stop the play. He just could not get there. As Kaminsky gave him the hook. And the Grizzly player was going to go in for a great shot on Frederick Shabbat. So Potter ended up having to call that penalty. But the Arrows, you know, this has been a great period. Both teams, I think, have stuck to their game plan pretty much. The Arrows want to play hard, play physical. And this game has taken on a physical meaning. And, and the Grizzlies are a team that can play physical, but they're not known for that. Well, when you talk to what's going, Mick Fakoda. Once they got Mick Fakoda from the Islanders, he just made everyone else play a lot physical. And we saw that in his first shift with Steve Jakes and Dave Morissette. Drew both their attention, which isn't too hard to do. No, 
not for those two guys. Arrows on their second power play of the night. Carl Balamont wins the puck to Bowler, shot the puck in. But Gardner slowed behind the net. Sharples rolled over there, but it was chipped away by Conroy. Greer rolled it down for Bowler. Arrows set it up. Here's Al Conroy to the right of MacArthur. Put it to the boards for Freer. Now it is Bowler at the hash marks, right side. Cuts it down. Freer centered. Oh, he just missed Hurl, but it was read beautifully by Jim Dowd. He broke it up, but Hurl, but got it back. Sent it to Conroy behind the cage. Watched by Sharples. Conroy sends it down. Some good cycling here by the Arrows on the power play. Puck is broken up, and here come the Utah Grizzlies. That is Sharples. He'll shoot it down the ice. Excellent job by the Arrow cycling, but the Grizzlies read it properly and fed off it and shot it all the way down. 107 remaining in the Arrow power play, but a minute remaining in the period. Here comes Valamont, drives the puck in. There's about a four second difference between the period and the power play. So if the Arrows don't score, they'll get four seconds to start the second. Here is Hurlbutt on the point, rides it over. Here's the drive by Valamont, deflected right on LaRouge. Turns and get the shot away. A glorious opportunity, couldn't get it away. And the Grizzlies will come up with it and clear it down the ice. 35 seconds to go in the period, and Valamont will go back. Carl Valamont skated up and out at center. He'll shoot the puck in. 30 in the power play. 26 to go in the period. Puck to the boards. Here's Ray Whitney. He'll send it ahead. Elaine Taylor in short and shooting Shabbat saving. And Taylor going hard and Freddie Shabbat taking it back. Taking exception of that. Goes barely into Taylor and everybody getting locked up here. A lot of pushing and shoving going on, and looks like the cooler heads prevail. 15.9 seconds to go in this first period, a scoreless game. Chris Taylor missing everything. It was clearly Taylor moving down the right side, and he had a great chance short-handed, and then he ran into Freddie Shabbat. One thing I've noticed from Shabbat more this year than I think any other year is how physical he's been, and we send it down to the Arrows bench, Rob Dobson. Hey, Dobbert, is that true? Do you see more of a physical play out of Freddie Shabbat this year protecting himself? I think so, Adam. You know, you look at what Freddie's playing and what he brings to this hockey club, and he knows how important and how well he's playing. If you look to a goaltender who's playing well, you seem to see guys driving in the net more and wanting to take him out of the play. And I think Freddie's taken exception a couple times. They're driving in the net hard, but they can avoid the goalie in that situation. A lot of times they're taking exception to the rule and trying to put him through the crease. So Freddie's standing up a little bit more. I think one time he had a little altercation with Troy Gamble, so he's really worried about it. We all were. We all were. Face off to the left side of Rob Dobson. Be sure to stay with us in the first intermission. We'll have a news update, and then we will chat with Mark Freer. He's played some great hockey, and he's having a terrific period here. Puck is in the Grizzly zone. McCarthy comes out, put it to the glass. Held it nicely by Werwanka. Five seconds to go in the period. Puck to the boards, and out at center. Lamb is there with two seconds left. Long center ice shot, blown by McCarthy. Horn sounds, and the period comes to a close. There will actually be three seconds remaining in the penalty to Jan Kaminsky when we resume play in the second period. Let's take you now to the high-low scoring summary. There is no scoring in the first period. The shots, 12-5 in favor of the Utah Grizzlies. When we return, we will have a news update, and then Troy Gamble visits with Mark Freer. We'll be right back. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome onto the ice. Intermission from the Delta Center. We are scoreless, and tell you what, Mark Freer has been playing some outstanding hockey for the Houston Arrows, especially as of late, and he is standing by with our Troy Gamble. Troy? Thanks a lot, Adam, and Mark, what a period. <laughs> well, you know, both uh, teams, I think, had great scoring opportunities on the power play. Uh, it's tough to get going in the game when uh, there is so many power plays, tough to get a flow, especially for us. You know, coming in on the road like this, we normally like to get the first period through with just one penalty maybe or, or no penalties at all so we can get a flow going. Well, and you, when you speak of flow, tonight it seems very physical out there. Uh, yeah, there's been some big hits. Uh, I think both going both ways, but uh, that's part of the game and you're going to expect that night in and night out. And your, your play, Mark, you know, you went six games without a point, but your last seven games you have eight points. What has been the big thing for your resurgence? I just think uh, the puck started to go back in. Uh, I think I've always had the chances. I've had probably 25 breakaways this year. It's, it's too bad I've only scored on one or two. But, you know, if I, if, even if I shoot 25% on those, you know, you're looking at another five goals, uh, 
five or six goals. You know, some some years the puck has eyes and some years it doesn't. And it has to help playing with some guys like Al Conroy and Mark Lamb. Yeah, it, it, it has. Uh, you know, Al Conroy, Alan May, myself for a line. We had it going for a while, uh, probably about 20 games ago to, to probably about 10 games. We had to 10 games stint that we were really going and then uh, went on that five game drought kind of and then uh, they put me with Bill Bowler and things have picked up since and now I'm back with Al Conroy. And, and you know when you talk to Dave Tippett and you mentioned Mark Freer's name the one thing that he said all year is defensively you've been great. Well I think uh, after last year being minus uh, 17 or 18 at the end of the year I was I was really disappointed with myself and you know although minus uh, playing center last year a lot of times I couldn't do anything about the minuses I got. I'd be stuck behind their net, the puck would be turned over, and they'd come down the ice and score. They'd end up getting a two-on-one. Playing left wing now, I, uh, I can hang back a little more, I can read the play, and uh, I always have a say in if they get an outnumber advantage against us. And right now, uh, normally when uh, whoever line I've played against, we normally don't get outnumbered too often. Thanks a lot, Mark. Thanks, Troy. Let's send it back up to Adam Gordon for some more. Thank you, gentlemen. Mark Furr definitely has been on fire with 33 points. And when we return, we'll look at the highlights from that first period. We are scoreless. We'll be right back. A scoreless hockey game after 20 minutes of action from the Delta Center. Welcome back. Adam Gordon along with Troy Gamble. And uh, it was a period where the arrows really didn't get a lot of flow. I thought Mark Freer attributed it pretty well. There were a couple of power plays that took them out of their flow, but five on five hockey, the arrows were as good, if not better, than the Utah Grizzlies in that period. Well, the thing that I thought that they did very well, Adam, they initiated the physical contact. That's what Dave Tippett wants to see on the road, and that is how they're going to have success tonight. Wednesday night against the Phoenix Roadrunners was a classic net mining duel between Frederick Shabbat and J.C. Bergeron. Tonight's no different as you take a look at the highlights and Freddie Shabbat up to his old tricks once again. Well, it seems it's like that every night in the IHL, and this is just Sharples with that huge wrist shot. And this is not a difficult save most nights, except it's on Sharples. Freddie Shabbat had to be very alert with the big glove hand. But down at, at the other end, the arrows had some chances. Mike Curl, but blast the shot. MacArthur cannot find it. It is behind him. But watch the Grizzlies, they box out so well the arrows. Very good job by the Grizzlies. The arrows just could not get to the loose puck. And here's a reverse angle look at Taylor going in on Frederick Shabbat. Frederick Shabbat holding his ground, getting knocked back into the net, not giving nothing to Taylor. Just great goaltending on both ends. From the Utah Grizzly perspective, we knew that Ray Whitney would be a factor coming into this hockey game. Hadn't had any real scoring chance. I thought the arrows neutralized him pretty well. Well, they did a very good job on Ray Whitney, but he had 10 minutes of ice time. And that's one thing that the Arrows are going to have to contend with, is that they're going to have to stay with him as he's always out on the ice. Yeah, Ray Whitney, one of those guys, he's in as good a shape as anybody, and the Arrows will contend with him for the next 40 minutes. Scoreless after 20 minutes of play from the Delta Center, and we will bring you second period action after this. We are moments away from starting the second period. Scoreless as we are ready for second period action. Troy Gamble. You know, the arrows now defend the goal to our left. And to the left side of Freddie Shabbat is a big circle. I think that's a huge distraction for goaltenders. And, and I totally agree with you, Adam. I believe that advertising should be in the ice, but not in that position. That's to the left-hand side of Freddie Shabbat. The Grizzlies goaltenders have an advantage. They play in this building all year. Freddie Shabbat has never dealt with that circle before, and it's going to be interesting. The puck goes from the white of the ice into the red, and sometimes it might be tough for him to pick up the puck there. Yeah, I don't mind seeing it the center ice area, but I think it's too much to the left of Shabbat there. And that takes us now to our stats, our arrows log, but brought to you by Southwest Airlines. 12-5, the Grizzlies out shooting the Houston Arrows, and both teams 0 for 2 on the power play. However, really, if you're keeping stats at home, Arrows just 0 for 1. There's only three seconds, though, left, and it would take a, a miracle for them to, to score with three seconds on the power play. So both teams three penalties for six minutes. And Mark MacArthur getting ready to start the period. He has won his last three starts, but this is a guy we touched upon. He had the 9-0-1 span of October when he was goaltender of the month, but he also had an 0-6-1 span from December 9th through January the 14th, and obviously Butch Gordon feels he's turned it around. Well, he feels that his confidence is back. He said during that streak, he just had no confidence, and the puck was just going by him so easily. Now he has confidence, now he's back. We are underway with the second period, the penalty right over, and we're back at five aside. Gordy Deneen in behind his net. Shovel the puck to the boards, knocked away by Freer. 
in to fight for it was Alme. Freer in there as well. Levers has him locked up along the wall. It's chipped back to the line. Lugged in. Basijo the shot. Stuck aside by MacArthur. Picked to the corner. Conroy centered. Knocked away by Deneen. He'll move it up the boards. And the pass to center ice for Sean O'Brien. 17 goals for the normal defense as he shoots a puck in. Shabbat covers up. Sean O'Brien, normally a defenseman. He was a defenseman for the Arrows. And uh, he has come to Utah and has really lit things up with 17 goals. And to go along with those, he's also got six assists for 23 points. Sean O'Brien, the Princeton product, uh, putting on a show. Well, he's played very well, and he has to face Frederick Shabbat tonight. That's a little tougher, but Sean O'Brien, lately, just look at those numbers. And we saw he had the best scoring chance in that first period. He turned around, got away the shot very quickly. He has that big size, and he's using it in front of the net. I don't know what they're teaching him at Princeton, but it's working now. It took three years for it to work, but now it is. <laughs> puck is shot down the ice, and Mark McArthur able to slow, and the Grizzlies turn the puck around. Miller finding it along the boards. Conroy knifed it down, but that was taken back by Deneen, put it to the wall, and here come the Grizzlies to center. Brent Levers leading the charge with O'Brien across the line. Levers cutting to his right. Basijo stayed with him as a centering pass went through the crease. Miller knocked it back down to Brent Levers. Levers turning in the corner. Levers looking, he centered one. That's broken up and popped out to center ice. Excellent defensive zone coverage by the Arrows, knocking that puck, following their man properly. Puck is shoveled ahead, it'll go into Arrow or into uh, Grizzly territory, but Rod Miller going back. He's blocked by Valasevic, and Joby Messier put it on the wall, not out. Yo held it in, second effort, popped to center. Here come the Grizzlies across the line. Taylor dropped it, Whitney pouring down the right wing. He looks in front, but circled back. Whitney dropped it down to the corner for Messier. Joby Messier, base of the circle, he centered the short shot by Whitney, and he just missed it, hopped off the stick. Now Whitney, the backhander, right on, Shabbat save, rebound, and Shabbat reached over and pucked it to the boards. Two marvelous chances by the Grizzlies, but the Arrows hold on, and they keep it scoreless. And that one player, Ray Whitney, we've been mentioning his name all night. Here's a giveaway. Bullard gets it back, center, no shoots! What a save by MacArthur! Oh! MacArthur, I have returned with a terrific save, and he kicked it out of there. And a delayed penalty coming up to the Houston Arrows. On the call, the puck at center, MacArthur scampers to the bench. Here is Chris Taylor moving down, popped away, Arrows touch, and the Arrows will be shorthanded. It's a roughing minor. Wow, what a save! Going from his left to his right, robbing Mike Yo MacArthur. That is a game saver. That is a guaranteed goal. Bill Bowler feathers this pass to Mike Yo. What a play. I, I mean, you cannot say how quick he moved from his right to his left. You know, the defenseman was forcing Bill Bowler. MacArthur realizing that cheated a little bit and cheated right, going left to his right and just stopping Mike Yo. Unbelievable save. So Yo is in the box. We've seen some unbelievable net mining now the last couple of games. I mean, we've seen it all year, but the last two games, the duels between Freddie Shabbat, tonight it's Mark MacArthur, Wednesday night it was J.C. Bergeron. Shouldn't be any different tomorrow either in Phoenix. And when you talk to Dave Tippett, he says, on any given night, your goaltender has to play well or you don't win in the IHL. Goaltending is the key. And the arrow's getting it right now. Here's Taylor on the power play. The pass to Denise at the point. Shoveled it down. Here's a chance. Levers cuts it back to the line. Taylor looking in front. Roll it down. Levers roll the pass. Here's a centering pass. Knocked away. Kaminsky couldn't get a stick on it. Shot it back to the line. Here's Gord Denine. Gives it down for Kaminsky. Sets up at the boards. Right side. A minute 40 on the power play. It's Kaminsky. Sets it back to the line. Taylor getting set. Cross eyes. Kaminsky in. Finding shooting. That hit a leg. Cuts to the boards. Back to the line, it's Taylor. Rolled it down for Levers. He hit, takes a hit from Carl Valamont. Levers shook off the check. Circled back, base of the circle in the arrow end. Taylor from the point, long shot, hit a stick. Back to the line, Deneen, winding, shooting, Shabbat saving the rebound. Just missing, Brent Levers. Back to the line, Taylor, cross ice pass. Deneen, rolled it back for Levers. Can't get the shot away. Sets it up. Oh, and Carl Valamont shoved the glove right at the Levers. Here's a drive by Taylor, and that went wide. Sean O'Brien trying to get in there. Valamont fell on top of the puck. It was kicked away. Fighting for it is Lamb. With 58 to go on the power play. Couldn't clear the end, but still tough for the puck. What a job by Lamb. And he will turn it, shovel it to the line. That came to center. Grizzlies will play it. That is offsides. What a play by Mark Lamb. Strong play by Mark Lamb to get it all the way out. The defenseman dove and tried to keep it in. Was not able to do it. Excellent job by Mark Lamb, but also the Grizzlies moving the puck very well on their power play. 
You know, Lorinov going back and forth must be very tired. Here's Mark Lamb, he's gonna fire it out. The defenseman dives, he's just not able to keep it in. The puck did go across the line, that's why it was offsides. So they'll bring the face off to neutralize and John Parner, the referee, say, hey, 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 I'm coming over to explain things to Butch Goring right now. And Butch, always active on the bench. Well, I think he's trying to explain him. Well, Carl Belmont, he fired the glove towards the Grizzly player who had the puck, yeah, trying to illegal. distract him. And that's what Butch Goring, he was livid about that. And he had a right to be. Puck is out at center and shot back into the Grizzly zone. 16 and a half to go in the second period. Scoreless hockey and Sharples in behind his net. He'll skate away. Here come the Grizzlies to center. Sharples carried across the line with 35 on the power play. Pulls up along the boards. Sharples to the line. Messier winding shooting and it was high and wide of the cage. Pearl but goes in hard. It was rolled to the board. Sharples bumped but it picked up in by Ray Whitney. It's Sylvain No. Scooped it down but Jinx was there. Put it up ice and it's down into Grizzly territory with 15 seconds remaining in the Utah power play. And the arrows are their belly killing unit tonight, trying to force the Grizzlies there. They had a lot of success. Puck is out at center. Here come the Utah Grizzlies across the line. A chance right in the shot. And Shabbat the Savi will hold on with two seconds remaining in the Mike Yo penalty. And Shabbat will hold on with 15.47 to go in the second. And a scoreless hockey game. Great move by Jim Dow going around the arrows defenseman. He has such a long stick, he goes in and out on Mike Hurl, but then takes that shot. Look at Frederick Shabbat. There's nowhere to score. He's on the top of his crease. Look at this reverse angle. You cannot see no net. There's no net there to shoot. And when Frederick Shabbat looks that big, he's gonna be tough to beat. Keeps it scoreless. There's two seconds left to Yo. And he'll pop out of the penalty box. Bowler against Brett Levers. And now Bowler tossed out of the circle and Rob Balasevic will take the draw. A key draw here. The Grizzlies win it. They have about two extra seconds here. They could go to work on it while they wait for Yo to join the play. Drop of the puck. Grizzlies win it. Came back to the line. Yo comes out of the penalty box, but it's intercepted. And here's a lead pass from Bowler just missing. Mike Yo, MacArthur out of the board. They're out of the net. Give it Bowler. Long shot. Not blocked by Denis. And MacArthur had to cover up in two nights in a row now. The arrow saw it Wednesday night when Brad Tiley had to save the day, and here it is Gordon Denis that does it once again. 15 and a half to go on the second, and we remain scoreless. Scoreless hockey game, we send it down to the arrow's bench. Rob Dobson a moment ago, a terrific save from Mark MacArthur. Yeah, it was, Adam. Look the whole play and the way it was set up. The D played it perfectly. He kind of forced a little bit of, of a pass from Bill Bowler, and then MacArthur made a great read to come across on Yosey. It's something you see more and more. You know, I've been around this league for seven years, and the goaltending has improved so much, and it's such a dramatic change, as Troy had mentioned. It's a big part of the IHL now, and you got to make a good shot to score a lot of times now. Dobber, quickly, are the boys getting frustrated with all the chances they're getting? Well, I, I think, Adam, we just have to bear down a little more. We, we didn't drive to the net as hard as we should have in the first period. We had a couple of good chances that we missed, but it's not frustration, just need, needing to work harder. Thank you very much. Puck is in the arrow end, and it's controlled down by Tyler Boucher. Boucher scooped it down. Here's a centering pass. That's picked up by Balasevic. Rolled it to the boards. It went down the ace. Balasevic gets it back right at the Grizzly blue line. Across the line he comes. Flies it back to Bowler. Trying to put it to the corner. Sharples first one there. And Jim Dowd will take over for Utah. Scooped it ahead for Mick Makota. His pass intercepted. Mike Yo is there. He's got Makota on his case. And the puck comes down. Here's a centering pass broken up by Jim Dowd. Tyler Boucher, he'll shoot the puck in, and out of the net, Frederick Shabbat. Here is Dave Basigio. It's Valasevic, a long pass that misses everybody. And Deneen going back, he will touch, and icing is the call. And 14 and a half to go in the second, we are scoreless. We are right back here Monday night on KNWS Channel 51. It's the Arrows and the... Utah Grizzlies at 8 o'clock. And Troy Gamble, will you be in the hot tub? Well, I, I don't think I'll be down in the hot tub. We're a little far away from the hot tub, but it looks like it's pretty crowded down there tonight. Not too much room in that hot tub. Thank goodness I never have to go in there again. That's right. You did have the hot tub. Last year during the Turner Cup Finals, you got to join into the festivities. We had to put Dauber in the hot tub next game. <laughs> Let him report from there. We may never get a report. <laughs> Here is Lorne Knopf off the draw and behind the net. And it's taken by Carl Valabot.
Matt out at center ice. Townsend's pass broken up by Kaminsky. Townsend got it back and he shoveled it in to the Utah end. We are scoreless. Both teams have had some great chances, but both teams have had some great goaltending. Puck is put to the corner. Along the wall, it came down. Here's a pass that swept away, and Brett Lever scampered to center. Levers to the neutral zone. Kaminsky across the line. Dropped it. Kaminsky's in. The shot. Love saved by Shabbat. And he will hold on. A dangerous play as Brett Levers crossed it up a moment ago with Jan Kaminsky, and Kaminsky with a great shot, but Shabbat up to the task. Well, it was a straight two-on-two -two situation. The Arrows defenseman, Carl Velma, goes with levers. He drops it back. But look at the read by his partner, Knopf, coming over. Frederick Squat making a very good save, but an excellent defensive play. Carl Velma comes over. Knopf reads that. He forces Kaminsky to shoot early. Then Frederick Shabbat's up to the task, makes a great save. I don't know if there's anything more confusing sometimes for defense, when, even though it's a two-on-two -two when the two forwards cross. Well, it, you have to have communication. It looks like in that situation, Knopf and Belmont did. And they haven't played much. They have played a little bit together since Knopf has come, but for the most part, haven't played a lot together. Buck is in the arrow and both them on the boards. Out at center and gloved and controlled by Joby Messier. Put it to the boards right at center. Conroy had it for Houston. Sends it to Freer, trying to snap it in. It hit Almay in the entrails, and here come the Grizzlies. Buck is shot in by Messier. Out of the net, Frederick Shabbat. He'll leave it for Jakes. Ray Whitney knocked it down. Hit by Conroy. Rolled down Taylor, whacked by Jakes. Good battle on the boards. Taylor to the line. It skipped over Messier. It's down the ice. Seven minutes gone, second period, still no score in the hockey game. Grizzlies put it up ice. Ray Whitney through the neutral zone, across the line with Taylor, broken up by Rowenka. And here comes Al Conroy through the neutral zone, hits the line. Conroy, the pass, Rowenka right in, the shot! And I think MacArthur may have gotten a stick on that. Now Rowenka, centered one, Taylor broke it up, and here come the Grizzlies. Whitney hits the line. Whitney circled back to his right. He's got Makota in front. He centered it. But it came back along to the line. And there is Darcy Rowenka to take over. Another glorious chance just going awry. Morissette across the line. But Yo ahead of the play offside. And we take a break. 12 and a half to go in the second. We remain scoreless. A great chance for the Arrows here. Three on two. Al Conroy feeds Darcy Rorenka. Watch Dave Moore set number 20. Misses the net. And look at the physical play in front of the net. Gord Deneen and Al May, former teammates. You could not tell from that picture. Puck is out at center. And the arrow's going back in their end. Rorenka snapped it to neutralize. Bowler had to put it back. Arrows have shown some tremendous patience tonight. They're not forcing much, and they haven't really been in an outnumbered rush. Well, they're on the road. That's yeah. what they do. What am I thinking? What am I thinking? 10 of their last 12. Yeah, all right. Thanks, Troy. <laughs> Slipped my mind. Here is Tyler Boucher for Utah across the line. Looks for Jim Dowd cutting to the net. Won't get it to him. Rowenka put him to the boards. Rowenka trying to pop it free. Dowd loosened it up. He had it centered. Here's the shot by Lakota. Great save. Beat by Shabani. Had a glove on it. It's turned away by Bill Bowler. He tried to skate away from Boucher. And it's put up to Moose Morissette. And up ice he will come. Dave Morissette, the cross ice pass down. Oh, and the arrows had too many men on the ice. I think they're going to get away with one. Graham Townsend had leaped out on the ice, and the arrows clearly had six men, but I think they got away with one. Here is Jim Dowd. Pushed it down to the boards. Townsend in to take it. Take a heavy hit from Lakota. And Mark Lamb is there. He'll put it to center. And Guy LaRose fired it ahead. Here's Warren Knopf. Knopf put it down for Townsend. I'm going to tell you, Lauren Knopf's been up with the play a lot tonight. And he's been on the ice a lot tonight, getting a lot more ice time. Puck is to Brent Lever, scooped it down. Shackles is there. Still no score. We're nine minutes into the second period. Valamont scampers back to play in his own end. And the pace this game has been terrific. Terrific pace. Kyle Valamont in behind his net. Four check by Levers. And look at Freddie Shabbat wreak a little havoc with Levers. Here is a pass out at center ice for Al May. Across the line with Lamb. May centered, but Lamb a little late arriving. May, or make it Lamb, chased it down to the boards. Put it for LaRose, trying to cut in. LaRose had a lane, had to do some stick out. He was knifed away. And here's Kaminsky, a man to beat Jakes. Had to get in there, and Jakes stayed with a backhander. Shabbat, ooh, that handcuffed him, but he was able to make the save. What a play by Jan Kaminsky. 
Kaminsky back along the boards. Back to the line for Vladimir Shematurkin. Popped up the boards, not out. Held in by Kaminsky. Sets up in the slot. Winds the pass. Levers fanned on the shot. It's in front. Shabbat down, reaching for it. It goes to the corner. Hurled up with a hit to Levers. And Conroy cleared it out at center. Al May sweeped it into the Grizzly zone. Deneen has to hustle back. And his former teammate Al May trying to chase him down and all. May put a pretty good two-hander on him, but Deneen, he'll skate the center. Deneen gains the arrow line, shoots, and it went wide. Deneen trying to bring the puck along. He is tied up by Conroy and came back to the line. Taylor, the shot here is another penalty coming up to the arrows. Tell you, their penalties have not been the most disciplined tonight, and they're going to put the Grizzlies on the power play once again. And Steve Jake's going off. I believe it's going to be for interference, and this is not a great penalty for the arrows to take. Gordy Deneen jumping up in the play, end to end, kicked it up in his feet, almost looked like Paul Coffey for a minute. Then after he took the shot, was wheeling back around, Steve Jakes held him down. Gordy Deneen, now, here's a guy that's obviously been part of the two Turner Cup championships for the Utah Grizzlies, not only part of both, but a very integral part. But this is his first season as an IHL free agent. Last year, he had a little contract with between the Islanders the year before and the Florida Panthers, and this is his first year. And uh, how about this? Gordy Deneen leading all players on the uh, Utah Grizzlies with 21 assists. Yeah, and he's not noted to be a real offensive guy, but with all their injuries, Sharples has been hurt. You know, it, with all their injuries, he's got a chance to play the power play a lot more. And, He's played very well, and he has all that experience. 519 NHL game, but the kicker there out of 40 Stanley Cup playoff games. Playoff games in the NHL. How big are those in Turner Cup action time? Puck is out at center, and Deneen will take it. Fourth power play of the night for the Grizzlies. 0 for 3 on the man advantage. Well, with his Turner playoff cup time, he's played another year. Yep. Chris Taylor. He'll put the puck to center. Skipped ahead, but broken up by the arrows, and right back down the ice it'll go. Minute 35 to go on the power play. Puck is controlled. Taylor, he'll move it up and out at center. Taylor through the neutral zone, drives one in. It came to the boards. Freer trying to move it out of there, could not do it. Sylvain No worked it back. Whitney drives it in, and here's Shabbat, puts it to the glass, and it's out at center. Well, he said he's been working on that shot right there. That's a great example of getting the puck and firing off. I almost said Dobson put it to the boards. That was so good. Puck is along the wall. Malamon hemmed in along the wall. Puck is controlled on the power play, which has a minute remaining in it. Sylvain No back to the line for Whitney. Pass to the line. Taylor the drive. That's deflected. It'll come back to the corner. Ray Whitney there. Whitney trying to cut in. He's got a lane. Trying to stuff it in. Waiting behind the net, looking to center it. Whitney. Oh, that was pushed away. And Bill Buller will shoot it down the ice. Whitney just trying to force it a little too much. The arrow's realizing that collapsing. Bill Buller shooting it all the way down. Darcy Warwanka. He'll fire it to the boards. It'll go into Grizzly territory. MacArthur's there. Sharples, he'll turn the puck around in his head. The lead pass for Levers across the line. Levers trying to move in. Brett Levers back to the line. Sharples scooped it back down. Brett Levers with 19 on the power play. Hands the puck down, but Levers got it back. Setting up with 14 on the man advantage. Still waiting, cross ice pass. Just missing Kaminsky. Back to the boards. Messier scooped it down. Puck is down for O'Brien. Along the boards, here's the chance. Back to the line. As the penalty now over, teams are back at five aside as Jake's out on the back out of the box. It shot the length of the ice, no icing as MacArthur came out of the cage to play it. And he'll put it over to Get Joey away. Messier. Sends it back to Sharples. Pretty good defensive game, although both teams have had some quality chances. And here's Levers once again. Nice move, he's in alone. He shoots. Shabbat misses it. Wow, what a save by Shabbat robbing Levers. And the door is slammed. Arrows bring it in. It is LaRose. Trying to scoop it down for Lamb. Townsend digs it out, looks in front. Graham Townsend hands it back. Jakes had it popped, but he took a hit and got it down. Seven minutes to go in the second period. We are scoreless. And a moment ago, Freddie Shabbat, the man. Here's a long shot, glove save made. And it is continuing once again. Some terrific net minding. Shabbat and the Arrow scoreless with the Grizzlies. Arrow zero, Grizzlies zero, but the goaltender coming up huge. Freddie Shabbat, watch this wrangle dangle between the legs, levers, 
Then going in on Frederick Sabat, going left, right. Frederick Sabat holding his ground, going down, stacking the pads. Great save. But this is just a great move by Labors going around Basijo between the legs and then picking up his pace going left, right. But Frederick Shabbat on top of his crease, lying down, making a terrific save. Arrows winning the draw, but the puck is shot back into their own end, and Hurlbut's got to scamper back to get it. 6.45 to go in the second period. No score in the hockey game. Shots are now 16-8. Arrows with three shots on goal in this period. They haven't ge generated much on the offensive end, but uh, the Grizzlies have been able to muster eight shots on goal once again here. And now Jimmy Dowder actually checked that four shots. Not a, here is Freer across the line. Freer sends one to the corner, in after it. Mike Hurlbutt, he stuck one in there, and the save is made by uh, MacArthur. Alan May. He's hit by Denis. Here is Freer, lost the handle. Conroy lost it back, but it's Chase with a shot and a glove save. Made by MacArthur, and he'll hold on. Great job by MacArthur to get the whistle diving out giving his Grizzlies time to recoup as the arrows all of a sudden had a little flurry on the Grizzlies. Arthur realizing that, watch this simple play by Mark Furry. He had no play whatsoever, dumps it in deep. That is a smart road play. And then Mike Hurlbuck gets a great scoring chance off a simple play by Mark Freer. And that is just terrific hockey for the arrows. A simple play that Mike Hurlbuck made into be a great play. Face off is once again in the circle to the left side of Mark McArthur, Bowler with Valasevic and Yell, Besigio and Rowenka defensively. Taylor against Bowler, and off the draw, Taylor wins it. It came over to Sylvain No, he'll move to center with Whitney and with Taylor. Puck comes in, Shabbat out of the net to play. Frederick Shabbat put it to the boards, knocked down. It's Bowler trying to loosen it up, scooped it down, and Darcy Rowenka is there, and he'll put it out at center ice. 5.45 to go in the second period. And the Arrows and the Grizzlies scoreless. Puck is down and Basicio's got to go back to play it. This will be another icing call on the Utah Grizzlies. 5.36 to go in the second period. And we are scoreless. Fans, get an early start on your Mardi Gras celebrating. You don't have to go all the way to New Orleans. You can come to the Summit. Friday, January 31st, the Rice Marching Owl Band will be on hand along with the Blues Brothers for your entertainment. Come early. The first 6,500 fans receive cool Jeep sunglasses. That's on Friday, the 31st of January at 7 o'clock. It's your Arrows taking on the cross-state rival San Antonio Dragons. And it's too bad the Arrows did not have that promotion last week, Adam, as you're on your way to Phoenix tomorrow. You could use some of those sunglasses. I brought mine. Oh, you did. I saw them today. A beautiful day in Salt Lake, by oh, the way. It doesn't get any better than what we had today. No, the mountains, a beautiful city. Beautiful city here. And a beautiful hockey game. It is scoreless. Puck is out at center, pushed away by Sharples. Arrows trying to loosen it up, but it was shot in by Sharples, and Shabbat there to glove it. He'll put it behind the net, and there is Dave Basijo to play. Grizzlies into four check, and Basijo trying to find a lane to pass. He'll launch one up ice, it'll go the length of the ice, and this will be no icing as they say Deneen can play it. Deneen put it to the boards, it's out at center ice. Controlled by Taylor. He'll bring it across the line with Ray Whitney. Whitney the cross, or takes the cross ice pass, put it down. Shabbat there to stick it aside. Taylor along the boards. Taylor scooped it down for Sylvain. No. Whitney, nice pass. Broken up though by Vesicio. And back to play. It's Rob Balasevic. Merlenka hemmed in by Whitney. Balasevic moves it up the boards. It's held in though. The Grizzlies have done a terrific job of holding it in tonight. Carried the edge in play in the second period. Chris Taylor trying to cut in. That was stripped by Yo, and he'll move out at center ice. Arrows up the boards. It's Yo that puts it in. Well, they've got the puck deep on the arrows, and they're rotating it very well. Their forecheck's been excellent, the Grizzlies, this period. 4-10 to go in the second. Still no score. Gordon Deneen puts the pass over to Rod Miller, bumped it out at center and into arrow territory. And Lauren Knopf going back to play. Knopf gathers it in, that is icing, and we will take a timeout. We are exactly four minutes to go in the second. We are scoreless. Fans, be a part of Arrow's excitement on and off the ice. You can join the Houston Arrow's Tail Gunners Booster Club. Don't miss out on all the fun. You can join us February 1st 
heading down to San Antonio to cheer on the Arrows in their battle against the Dragons. 621-2842, the number to call. And if you can't make it to San Antonio, it is a game you will be able to see live on Fox Sports Southwest, as well as our radio station affiliate, KKHT. 106.9 FM. It's going to be interesting being inside a 60,000 seat dome for a hockey game. They partitioned it off, but still will be very interesting in the Alamo Dome. Here come the Grizzlies all across the line. A pass for O'Brien. He's in. Shabbat saving, and then the net becomes dislodged. And they're going to say O'Brien went sliding in there. O'Brien wanting the penalty, but it's going to be a faceoff brought out at center ice. You can see how much more confident O'Brien is this year than last year. He played a little bit with the arrows. This time, watch it when he falls down. He almost tries to throw the puck in past Frederick Shabbat. He's throwing it at Frederick Shabbat. That would not have been a goal if it did go past him. And then he ended up going flying into the net. Let's send it down to the arrows bench and Rob Dobson. Dobber, even though it's still scoreless and the arrows playing some good defense, who do you give the edge and play to right now? Well, I think you have to give it to, to uh, Utah, Adam. We're not quite doing what we set out to do. We play a 1 2 2 system. What that is, we'll send one guy in deep and we have two support men. Tibbs calls them the F2 and F3 forwards. We're not getting enough pressure from those guys to create enough opportunities to score. Thus, we've only got 10 shots. Thank you very much as O'Brien put a shot on that Shabbat mishandled. And play whistled down. Once again, Dauber, I want to ask you a question, though. Are you amazed at the excellent net mining we've seen the last couple of games? Well, it's, it's incredible. And again, I, you keep going back to over the years and what I've seen happen. And goaltending has become a big part of not only this league, but the NHL as well. You look to the save percentages in this league, and you go through the statistics, and it's incredible to see that everything's up around 900. If you're, not, if you're below 900 in this league, you're out of the norm. And it's, it's an incredible statistic to look at. It's one of the biggest things. And I attribute that to more so the solid play of all defense. And a lot of coaches are going to a defensive style. You know, like you look to tonight, the goaltenders have come up and made great saves when they've had to, but they've also had pretty, you know, 18 to 10 shots isn't a hard game really to this point. Thank you. Messier scooped it back behind the net for Sharples. Put it to the boards for Sylvain No, and the Grizzlies turn the puck around. Messier run into by Lamb. Puck hard along the wall. No is there, and it's scooped out at center. Hurlbutt's going back. Here is Jake's to play with three minutes to go, and we're scoreless. Here come the arrows. They'll shoot the puck into the Grizzly end. Sharples going back to turn the puck around, and Utah up ice. Taylor through the neutral zone. Brought it across the line. Run into Hurlbut, but it jumped on No. Winding, shooting! Shabbat saving. He'll hold on. 2.46 to go, second period. Still no score. Excellent save once again by Frederick Shabbat. Standing at the top of his crease and not letting no get a very much net whatsoever. You know, when Frederick Shabbat's playing well, the one thing you always notice is he's on the top of his crease. He goes down and he just sucks the puck. It's almost like it has a magnet into his stomach area. And on the road this year, he's been terrific. Let's look at some of those numbers. Do Rob Dobson just alluded to the Sabre set. Well, 91.7 on the road is just terrific. And with that record, it's even better. And we touched upon it earlier. Butch Goring, he said no bones about it. Frederick Shabbat is the best in the IHL right now. And he's showing why. But uh, Mark MacArthur knows so much either. I mean, he seems to have turned his play around. Here's Deneen with a long shot. Shabbat bobbled it, but he stayed with it. Well, both the goaltenders confidence. There's just one word for goaltending when they're playing well, confident. And both these goaltenders are confident right now. Frederick Shabbat has been confident now is since October. And here he is just once again. This is a hard shot from the point. And there's just nowhere for the Grizzlies to shoot on him. And then after the puck hits him, Mick Fakotas is in his face, but he still has the presence to find the puck and grab it. I'll tell you what, Mick Fakota has stirred things up tonight. He's not, not, not played a poor game at all tonight. He's played very hard tonight. Freer across the line with May, shoots the puck in. MacArthur knocked it down, put it to the boards. Arrows, Wawenka held it in with a wrist shot. And there's a glove save made by Mark MacArthur. You're talking about Mickey Vakota. Go back to the year when you were playing in Spokane, Troy. You had Mick Vakota and Dean Ewan. Was there a tougher one-two combination in hockey? No. What more can you say? Both of these guys, Mick Vakota, who's down from the New York Islanders, he is the New York Islanders career penalty minute leader. He's played with the island for seven straight years, and he's one of those guys He's not scared to drop the gloves. It was funny, the year he left Spokane was the year Ray Whitney came in as a 16-year-old, Troy, and 
Everybody knew that when Bob Strum signed Ray Whitney along with Pat Falloon that there were going to be some special things, and they have not disappointed in the NHL. And although Ray Whitney for a time being here in the IHL, it's not going to be long before Whitney back up at the NHL level. Well, he's such a great player. And when you talk about good things, well, what, two years after they showed up in Spokane, they won the Memorial Cup, which is the top trophy for junior hockey all across Canada? Well, there is one thing that they do all have in common outside of just playing in Spokane is a shot by Warwanka right on the card for the save. That's it. They played for Butch Goring. Ray Whitney out at center, tried to bring the puck in. That's knifed away by Gordon e. Taylor the pass. No, is in. Dropped it. Oh, he should have shot it. Procedio read it nicely. I think Sylvain Noah would like to have that chance back. Conroy left at center, put the puck into the Utah end. In after it, Sheva Turkin. Watched by May. A hard hit to the boards, but Deneen steered it up the ice. Here comes Sylvain Noah. The pass out at center for Ray Whitney. Whitney tried to make the move. Hope check by Gorwenka. And here's Conroy. Conroy gains the line, hands it down low. Rowenka trying to put it down, but it was taken away. We've got a Grizzly penalty with 1.42 to go, and Arrows can't catch a break. They caught a penalty with under two minutes to go in the first period, and they're going to get another power play, but with only a minute 42 to go. And it's too bad. You'd like to see him at least get a full two minutes to try and work on a power play here. Well, you'd like to see him get the full two minutes or get it at the last part so that they can come out with that clean ice. It's easier to move the puck around. But, I, you know, when Dave Tippett, with no going off, he's just happy that his power play unit is going out. Now they have a chance here to maybe break this deadlock 0-0 tie going in for the break. How huge would a goal be right now for either hockey team at oh. this point? What is that one stat about when the arrow score first? Yeah. How many have they won in a row? 16? No, 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 the Grizzlies. When, oh. they are, when they are leading after two periods, the Grizzlies have won all 16 this year when they've led after two, but going back to the last two years, Troy, this year, last year, the Utah Grizzlies when leading after two periods, 35-0-1. And that's attributed to Butch going. Once they have the lead going into that third period, it is played so well. And we just talked about when the arrow score first, they got the 16 games in a row when they've won up. Stats, stats, stats. Here's a... Puck controlled by the arrows. It came down, Lamb shooting, and I think MacArthur got a piece of it. Puck picked up by Lamb. Base of the circle, sends it back to the line for Hurl, but a minute and a half to go in the period. Lamb all on the boards, got it down for Guy LaRose. He's got Townsend Kemp in front, but Lamb winding, shooting, deflected just wide. Here's a centering pass, it skates. O'Brien flipped it to the boards. Can the arrows hold it in? Yes, Hurl, but popped it to Townsend. Takes a bump from Sharples. Arrows worked it back, Hurlbut and held it in, but then lost it. Here comes O'Brien, short-handed, across the line. O'Brien steered it down, but the arrows, Kyle Valmont got back and played it away. Hurlbut in his own end, watched by Taylor. Taylor trying to take it away, he did, but Valmont was there. Taylor, what a job he is doing. He centered the shot, that went wide. It's all Chris Taylor right now. Kaminsky, met by Hurlbut. Puck came to the boards. Taylor and Valamont go to the corner. Taylor loosened it up. Looks in front. He centered the pass. That's pushed away. It's out of neutral ice. Great job by both Grizzly board checkers, Kaminsky and Taylor, just keeping the puck away from the arrows. Half a minute to go in the second period. Still no score. Conroy at the right of center. Hoisted it high in the air. Bounced to the right of MacArthur. Flipped it to the boards. Taylor, can he clear it? No. Held in by... Mark Freer, he's got it hemmed in there, and finally play is whistled down. There's 34 seconds left, and the Sylvain no penalty, but 16 and a half seconds to go in the second. Still no score, and Joby Messier, what a story he is. He was in a car with his brother Mitch in Florida when they got into a bad car wreck, and you might recall Jeff Batters from Kansas City in the car. He died, Jeff Batters did. Mitch suffered severe head injuries. His hockey career is over. Mitch, or Joby, escaped serious injury. He just missed all of last year because of a knee injury. Yeah, and that's just a tragedy with one of the hockey players passing away and the Messier I mean, the players. last year, what a year it has been. I, you know, while I got a second, the news is at least more encouraging for Kevin Smith. We understand that there's a very good chance he may play hockey again. They're very encouraged. There's even some rumors, and I want to emphasize rumors, that he could come back this year. Now, those are unsubstantiated, but they're talking about getting Kevin Smith back, and I am just pleased for that kid if he could do it. Well, that, that's terrific for the Orlando organization, especially Smith. And I'll tell you what, if he can come back, that's just modern technology. Well, a lot of credit can go to the Solar Bears getting him that right technology. 
Here is Basijo at the point, watched by Denis. Five to go in the period. Rowenka, White shooting and hit a leg. Three seconds left. Here's a chance. Basijo, the drive right on. McCarthy save, rebound. They bang away at it just as the horn expires. What immediately there at the end, just as you think the period is over, the arrow's got a couple of great shots. Basijo, that is a tough save. The puck was bouncing. Then the puck comes out in front. Bill Bowler cannot put it in. MacArthur on top of his game tonight. Looking maybe ahead to the third period, you want to you want to see maybe a little more of a work ethic from the Arrows returning in the offensive end. Yeah, and Adam, the game is 0-0. The Arrows did not have a great second period. The one thing they've been able to do is in the third period find ways to win. And Dave Tippett is a master at getting his team ready for the third period. All right, it's time for our high-low scoring summary brought to you by Hilo Auto Supply. Here are the goals. Yep, you got it, none. Arrows 9-8 in the second period, shots on goal. We will have more from the Delta Center right after this. Scoreless hockey game after 40 minutes of play from the Delta Center. Welcome back, Adam Gordon alongside Troy Gamble. Troy, you were a player for many years, and obviously the Arrows experiencing a lot of success on the road. You as a player, why did you like the road so much? Well, I, I think on the road, all you do is concentrate about hockey. You know, at home, there's a lot of distractions, especially playing in a beautiful city like Houston. We know that there can be some distractions. And I think teams come into Houston and play hard, and I think the Arrows go on the road and play just as hard. Well, we asked before the game Dave Tippett, the head coach of the Arrows, his philosophy on why the team has been so, success so successful on the road, and here's what he had to say. Well, I think it's a combination of uh, playing a simple game plan, uh, sticking to that game plan. You know, we don't try to do too much. We don't get fancy. We uh, take what the other team is going to give us. And, you know, sometimes teams at home, they try to do too much, which is probably part of our problem at home. And uh, we've taken advantage of it this year. By far, the Arrows have been one of the better teams in the IHL. They're fifth in the IHL at 13-6-1 on the road. Their last 12 games, 10-2. But, you know, the goals for goes against 38-20 in that department. The bottom line is I think the Arrows have just kept it pretty simple. Well, you know what? There was one play in that period, Adam, and we went back to the highlight. Mark Freer had no play. What did he do? He dumped it down deep. Who gets the puck? Mike Hurlbut, who made a great shot on goal. That's a simple play that turns into a great play for the Arrows. A lot of road games coming up for the Houston Arrows. They're back on the road tomorrow as they will take on the Phoenix Roadrunners and back here Monday. Then the only home game of this little stint is fr Friday night at the Summit against San Antonio Dragons. Next night, the first, they're in San Antonio. February 5th and 7th in Manitoba, February 8th at Milwaukee, and then the 12th, they're back at Phoenix, a game you'll see here on KNWS. And you know the thing, you look at it, it's all Western Conference teams. A scoreless hockey game in the second intermission, and we will have more from the Delta Center when we return. Scoreless hockey game after two periods of play. Welcome back to the Delta Center. Adam Gordon, Troy Gamble, and uh, the Utah Grizzlies definitely had the edge of play uh, in that second period. Uh, not a lot of offense generated by the Arrows. What do you think the reason is? Well, you need the puck, and, and the Grizzlies had the puck that period. What ended up happening, Adam, is that their forecheck worked so well, and when the Arrows got the puck, they could not get it deep and work it down low. They need to get the puck deep and work it down low and let their forecheck take over. And what has been the story the last couple of games, Troy, has been the fact when the Arrows get chances like this one here by Bowler, they can't beat Mark MacArthur. Well, it's Mike Yost, the benefit there. That is just a terrific save going from his right to his left. Those are game savers on Mike Yo. But at the other end, watch the defensive zone coverage here. Kaminsky's going to get the good shot, but Knopf reads it and forces him to shoot a lot earlier than he wanted to. Great defensive zone coverage by the Arrows, the coverage. And then Levers, individual effort going around Basijo, putting it between his feet and then walking in on Frederick Shabbat, and Frederick Shabbat was not fooled at all going left and right. Great job. And on the reverse angle look here, you can really get to see how great of a move this is as he goes between not Basijo, but also the other Arrows defenseman catches up to the puck, and then Frederick Shabbat does the rest himself, lying down, forcing Levers to go nowhere with that shot. Third period should be a good one, and when we return, we'll bring it to you. We are scoreless. We'll be right back. A scoreless hockey game after 40 minutes of play as we're about ready. And Mark MacArthur, you know, here's a guy that we touched upon that had his spell of an 0-6-1 string and had won three in a row now. And 
clearly as much a factor as his counterpart, Freddie Chabot, tonight. Well, he's very streaky. You know, he had that great start, and now he's found that confidence, and Butch Goring is rewarding him with extra playing time, playing in the last three, now four in a row. And if he falters, his backup is terrific. Tommy Soderstrom, at first, I don't think the kid wanted to be here, but now he's kind of been acclimated to the Utah Grizzlies situation here. Well, I think what happens at first, you do not want to come to a strange city. He's been in New York, in Philadelphia, coming to Salt Lake City. He did not want to come at the start, but you know how it is, Adam. You get in that locker room, you get in there with 20 guys, and all of a sudden you start having fun, and it doesn't bother you nearly as much. Arrows have 17 seconds to work on a power play, but they lose the draw, and the puck goes down the ice. Shabbat slows it to see Joe going back. And here comes Dave Vesigio with eight seconds left on the power play. Puck at center, Rowenka fire the puck in. Out of the net, it was MacArthur. Two seconds left on the power play. And now, no out of the box, and teams are back at five aside, and the puck picked up by Sylvain No and shoveled down the ice. This will be icing. No, it went through the crease. That negated the icing. Puck out at center. Townsend, give it to Lamb. Fished it back. Here is Besiege on the drive. It was blocked by Deneen. It never made it to MacArthur. Puck is shot in. Right there with Shabbat. He'll slow the puck and roll it right over to Darcy Rowan because he gathered it in behind his net. Lugged away by Whitney. Sylvain Noah was there, but it popped up to Freer, and the arrows clear the zone. Messier. Got it to the boards at center, and Whitney's got a lane left side right in. He centered it, but nobody there, and the arrows played it away. Back to the line, Messier hands it down. Taylor tried to scoop it along, and it's out at center ice. Mark Freer, the pass for Jakes, across the line. Conroy was there to dump it in. Going back is Joby Messier. Messier put it to the glass, held in. Now well, they say no, and play is whistled down. 18.41 to go in the third. A scoreless hockey game, and let's go to the Arrows logbook from the second period, brought to you by Southwest Airlines through two periods. 20 to 14, the shots on goal in favor of the Utah Grizzlies. Obviously, the saves converse to that. Arrows 0 for 4 on the power play. Grizzlies 0 for 3. Houston with five penalties for 10 minutes. The Grizzlies 4 for 8. And you know what? When you look at the faceoffs one there, the Arrows 20 to 18. I believe in this third period, whoever controls the faceoffs is going to control the play. If the Arrows have the majority of the wins in the faceoffs, they will control most of the play. And off the draw, the Grizzlies back. A minute and a half gone here in the third. Still no score. Deneen hoisted a pass, rink wide, hard off the glass, into Arrow territory. Jakes is there to play it, scooped it down, Jakes trying to hammer that away. He was met by Kaminsky, Conroy over to play it, he got it to center, just missing Freer, the puck behind him, and it's shoveled in by Deneen. Jakes is there, met by Kaminsky, we've got a whistle and another penalty. I think it's coming up to the Arrows. I believe it's coming to Al May of the Arrows. He's going to get a tripping minor, I believe. It happened on Gordy Deneen. I'm not quite sure. It was after the dump-in took place. Al May was coming across the ice, and he ends up getting caught for a two-minute. Uh, the dumping goes in by Deneen. You know, that's the second time I think May's come up a little bit on the short end. You know, back in the first period, the play on Levers. I think Levers had lost his balance and went down, and this time, uh, I don't know. Well, he was giving Potter a mouthful, and after seeing that replay, rightfully so. Butch Goring's team goes back onto the power play, where they have not had a whole bunch of success tonight, except on their last power play, where they moved the puck around well. They just did not get those good quality shots. Off the draw, the arrows win the draw, but put to the boards, and Lever's got it back to the line. Did he scoop it to Taylor at the point? Over down for Lever, sets a pass, marks left side. Wanted the cross ice pass, but got it back. Taylor, he lets it go of a shot. Kaminsky missed to the short side. Back to the line, Denny tees the puck up. Here's the drive by Kaminsky right on. Shabbat the save. Puck is in skates, dished out by Kaminsky. Bumped it back to the line. Taylor is there, and the arrow's cage has been dislodged with a minute and a half gone in the Almay penalty. It was a huge collision behind the net. Steve Jakes ended up bumping the net, but a big collision behind the net caused the 
net to get dislodged. For an update on the Arrows, let's go to the bench, talk to Rob Dobson. Dobber, not a lot of offense generated by the Arrows. Did Dave Tippett address that? Yeah, there was a few things he addressed in the thing, and in uh, intermission, excuse me. You know, one thing, Adam, was we have to create more, as you mentioned, we have to create more opportunities down low. Our, our success when we've been, we are successful in getting a lot of chances to score is we work their defense down low. They've got an older defense. They are, Although they are a veteran, we feel we can work them down if we cycle that puck down low and create a lot of chances. It's real important in this period for our second and third forwards to, to do a little more to help to create those opportunities. The first guy is going to get pressure, but the second and third guys have to be there to support. You know, it's, a, it's, it's another chance to win a hockey game. That's all we wanted to come into the third period, so we just have to bear down, kill this off, and get back at them. Here's Cordy Deneen who scooped it down. Puck came down low. Back along the boards, Deneen scooped it to Kaminsky. Kaminsky looking along the boards. Ash Marks getting set toward Deneen. The pass, Taylor. Deneen again, winding, shooting, Shabbat saving. And the puck sizzling to the corner. Kaminsky back to the line, Deneen. Quick pass, Taylor. Cuts it down, red beautifully by Bowler. He'll move it up and out and down the ice. Taylor tried a very soft pass. Bill Bowler reading that, jumped on it, shot it all the way down. Under a minute to go in the fourth power play of the night for the Grizzlies. Gord Deneen, hard pass, up the cut to Jim Dowd. Cross ice pass out of the reach of Whitney. Got tripped up by Vasito. Now that's a penalty. But uh, John Potter are going to let it go. That was more of a penalty than the Al May one. Watt goes to the corner, and Whitney is there. Whitney, medal on the boards by Valamont, scooped it down. Here's a centering pass. Messier shooting, Shabbat saving rebound. Popped away. Back to the line. Taylor, that went off a skate. It's out to center. Messier hands it over. Whitney dropped it. Jim Dowd getting set, trying to cut it in. Dowd back along the boards for Sharples. Here's the drive by Messier right on. Shabbat there, he got a pat on it. Yo couldn't clear it. The penalty is over. And teams are back at five aside. Pass, pass centered. And here is Valamont. Up pass to neutralize. Give it to Yo. Dumped it in. May was in ahead of the play. It's a delayed off sides. And they'll bring the face off to center. Timeout on the ice. We are four minutes into the third. Still scoreless. Still no score. We talked about the Utah Grizzlies' success in the third, but Dave Tippett has reasons for his team's success. I think that can be credited to the players that we have. They're, uh, they're very devoted players. They're very, uh, their desire and intensity to win is, uh, is there every night. And most of the time, there's a lot of times when games can be won in the third period, and, and that's when they come to play the hardest. Puck is shot in to Grizzly territory. Conroy takes a hit from Messier. In digging for it, it was Freer. It went to the corner and Messier is there. Messier put it up ice. Here is Levers to the neutral zone. The pass along in front. Levers in on goal, shooting, and he flipped it just wide of the net. Crowd on the edge of their seats, thought it was going in, but it went wide. Puck to center and Levers regroups. We're just about five minutes into the third. Still no score in the hockey game. Deneen. Cranks one in narrow territory. It pops to the boards and Jakes is there. Here is Jakes. At center May. It went into Grizzly territory. Gord Deneen back to play. Shoveled it out at center. It went over Lorne Knopp. Bounced back into the arrow and at Shabbat will take no chances. He'll cover up and hold on. And now getting into it behind the play was Tyler Boucher. Balamont came in there. Now Townsend in there. And everybody all locked up. All five foot six of them in there in Carl Belmont's face, and then Vic Lakota comes in, and everyone else makes their way in there. I believe we might have a couple minor penalties here. It happened after Freddie Shabbat had covered the puck. Boucher took Carl Belmont into the boards. Both are going to go off. Vic Lakota in the middle of it. What a surprise. Well, anytime there's a melee on the ice, you're going to see Lakota. No, I don't know about that Fu Man Chewy has either. You never had that in junior, never had that with the Islanders. Not quite sure if I like that, but this is just a play where Boucher plays very hard, and then he takes Carl Belmont into the boards and takes a little exception to that, and Lauren Knopf, who's his partner, ends up giving him a little shot also. This is a dead play. You know, Boucher just takes a little too 
part of a path towards Frederick Shabbat, and the Arrows defense are not going to let that happen. You know, while we were talking about you playing with Mick Fakoda, my question, we talked about Dean Ewan and the kind of player he was as a leader. Was Mick Fakoda the same kind of guy? Well, yeah, anytime you have that size and that toughness, if your team's going to have success, those guys have to be leaders. But I mean character-wise. You know, Dean Ewan, one of the characters, and that's what I'm trying to get at with Lakota. Here's a shot by Kaminsky right on Shabbat to say. Well, it's tough to talk the character of Dean Ewing. Nick Lakota was a leader in a different way. He was not as vocal as Dean Ewing. LaRose gives it to Lamb across the line. Arrows turning. Basijo in. The shot. was a wide rebound. Hook just wide. It came out in front. And Kaminsky there. Turned to the corner. Rolled away by Gay LaRose. Deneen. Flipped it. And it's out the center. Rod Miller through the neutral zone. Give it to Kaminsky. Kaminsky trying to move in. The shot deflected away. Kaminsky went behind. Stuff shot blocked. Came to the line. Sharples had to go back to center and regroup there. Six minutes gone, third period. Still no score. Penalties by the way to Valamont and to Boucher. Down to a minute nine. So we're four on four for that duration. Here's Taylor trying to split the D. Not going to happen. For a minute there, he thought he was Moses splitting the Red Sea, but. Just singing the blues there as the defense collapsed on him. Well, the Grizzly forwards are, are trying to go between the feet of the Arrows defenseman. I don't know if that's a scouting report or what, but every time it's a one-on-one -on -one situation, you can look at the Grizzlies to try to put it in their feet. This is a great play by Kaminsky. He takes the shot, stays with it. Watch that sliding poke check of Frederick Shabbat. And, you know, we, we alluded to you know, Rob Dobson learning from Frederick Shabbat. And Rob Dobson used to do that last year a lot, that sliding poke check. And I think that's one thing Freddie Shabbat has picked up from Rob Dobson. Arrows with the draw. 13.45 to go in the third. Still no score. Earl Button his own end for Houston. The pass onto the tape of Alicevic. He had it knocked away by Messier, but Earl but scampered back in. Sliding down the left side. Ran into Sharples. Taylor there. Sharples hands it over to Ray Whitney. Ray Whitney will meander at center. The pass for Messier pouring down the left wing and across the line. He shoots it wide. Earl Butt gathers in the puck, winds it over to Valasevic, who lost an edge but got back up and it went into the Grizzly zone and Deneen breaks that pass up. Now Whitney with some room. Nice move, he's in alone. He shoots. Shabbat with the save. What a beautiful play by Ray Whitney, but an equally Nice save by Frederick Shabbat. Big play also between Jenks and Whitney. Those two have had their go a little bit tonight. And here is Bowler at center. Across the line with Freer. Back to the corner. Freer in after it is both Valamont and Boucher out of the box. Here's a pass out at center. Deneen across the line. Here's the chance. The shot. Broken up. Kaminsky turning, Jan Kaminsky trying to work it away, chopped by Warwicka. Deneen had it slide through him, and it'll go back down the ice. What a game, what a period. Both teams play very hard. The Arrows defensive zone coverage very good and getting tested by a very good Grizzly team. Puck is at center, Warwicka back to the blue. Here's Lord Knopf. He'll move it up the boards. The pass just eluding Freer, but he got it up with a stick to negate the icing. MacArthur wandering for it, but it's picked up by Freer. Kicked it down for May. Met by Miller. Skate the skate along the boards. In there was Freer. He tried to center a pass as Freer was creamed behind the cage by Brent Levers. And it's Levers out at center across the arrow line. Levers in, a drive right on. Shabbat will hold on and we'll take a break. 11.46 to go in the third. We remain scoreless from the Delta Center. Houston zero, Utah zero. Good look at Joby Messier, who you alluded to about his cousin, Mark Messier. Well, he had a Mark Messier performance last game. One goal, three assists for four points, a career high for him. Shots on goal in the third period. Not much in the arrows' favor. They have yet to get a shot on goal. They are trailing the hockey in 26-14, but you know, as far as I'm concerned, you throw that out the door. What matters is a great game. Sharples, and a scoreless game, by the way. Townsend. Puts the puck to the boards. To Valamon in after it. He cleared to center. Messier goes back and Sharples back to his own blue line. Winds one ahead. Fakota winds it up across the line. Center the pass. Dowd had to circle back. 
Spins the puck to Messier. Hash marks cutting in. He's centered. Valamont got a skate on it. Messier sends it down to the corner. Jimmy Dowd in behind. He centered it. And there was Lauren Knopf. What a game that kid's having tonight. And the puck is picked up by LaRose. Arrows come out with it. Mark Lamb through the neutral zone. LaRose and Townsend. Lamb, the pass. LaRose trying to get in. That was knifed away by Vakoda back out at center. Arrows finally getting the puck out of their own zone, but the Grizzlies defensive zone coverage just very good, not allowing the Arrows to get those shots. It's a great hockey game, but the ironic thing is, Troy, it is so different than the game we saw Wednesday against Phoenix. Uh, it's so different, and, and you've said that the Arrows have not had a shot. Well, I'm sure Dave Tippett always being positive is telling his guys it only takes one shot. Vladimir Shebaturkin trying to clear the zone, fired a shot right off Chris Taylor's head, but it hit the helmet. Bowler across the line. Yo trying to move in. It dropped back Bowler, getting set. Bowler at the point. Nice bit of stick handling. A good job trying to get around Taylor. Kicked it down. He takes a hit along the boards. They're skate to skate. Yo lost it. And the Grizzlies, Ray Whitney, shoots it down the ice. It'll go to Shabbat. That negates the icing. We're halfway through the third in a scoreless game. Puck is shot in by Valasevic. It'll come down MacArthur there. Steered down and Gordy Deneen takes over to the corner. Fired it to the boards, but Freer takes it back. Cuts it back to the line. Here's Dave Busiccio for the arrow. Shuffle the pass to center ice for Al Conroy. The pass, Freer breaking in. Trying to make the move, but he lost the handle on it. And Messier takes it away. Plays shot at the Conroy. It's centered, but off the skates of Freer. And the arrows have to hustle back, but they got four guys back. Kaminsky through the neutral zone. Roll the puck to Messier. Gets the puck into Arrow territory. Levers in after it. Chased by Werwenka. And it's pushed along. Kaminsky shoveled it down. O'Brien is there, but that is going to be a hand pass. And play whistled down. 9.34 to go in the third. Still no score. And Butch going has to be pleased with the way his team has played in this third period. You know, the, the score is 0 0, but. The Grizzlies have had the quality shots on Frederick Shabbat for the last two periods. And he's had to be very, very sharp. You know, and one thing that you can always tell about Freddie Shabbat when he's playing well is he's aggressive and he's very confident with and without the puck. We sent it down for an update from Rob Dobson. Dobber, it's hard to say at this point if the Arrows are sticking to their game plan, but regardless, it's a great game. Yeah, it is. And I think what you see now, Adam, is just both teams not wanting to make that mistake. Our goal in the third period, or coming into the third period, was, you know, it just takes one shot. You know, we don't want to give up too many quality chances and capitalize on our opportunities. So hopefully here in the next nine and a half minutes, we get that opportunity to score the game winner. Thanks, Dobber. Kind of uh, interesting. He says all it takes is one shot. Arrow's still looking for that first shot in the period. Puck is out at center. Conroy shot it in, but it was redirected by Denis. Couldn't clear it. Conroy knocked it down. Trying to spin the puck along the boards. It was muscled to center, and Jakes is back. Pearl, but back in his own end. Gives the puck to Jakes. He'll wind it through the neutral zone. Jakes across the line for Conroy. Conroy getting set. Conroy turning. He threw it off the skate to Deneen. Deneen circled back in the corner to the left of MacArthur. Winds it to center. It'll go the length of the ice. It's not enough for icing, so Houston's got to hurry back. Makota in to wreak a little havoc. Puts a shoulder into Al May. Those two going at a couple of heavyweights from the NHL days. 8.43 to go. Third period. Still no score. Brittany tried to steer it in, but that's intercepted. Graham Townsend's got it. Townsend, give it to Lamb. Moving down, he's trying to center it. Here is Guy LaRose. Scooped it down for Townsend. A pass back in front. Whitney intercepted it. He's out at center, but Pasicio stayed with him. Mark Lamb out at center. The pass for Guy LaRose as he gained the line. Trying to move down. Knifed away by Sharples. It scampered back behind Sharples. And LaRose battling. Chris Taylor lugs it up the boards. Put it to center ice. And Ray Whitney there. Across the line, Sylvain No. No pulling up. His pass came down, and Dave Basiccio is there. Off the boards, it came back to the line. Rod Miller, the drive, blocked in front. I think no hit it. Here's another drive, deflected just wide by Chris Taylor. And there was Graham Townsend. He'll shoot it out at center. Under eight to go in the third. Still no score. What a game from the Delta Center. Jakes make it hurl, but trying to clear it. It went down the ice. This will be icing as Deneen going back and play is whistled down. Do you believe it? 7.40 to go in the third. We remain scoreless. Time to take a look at tonight's Columbia community calendar. March 10th, it's the first annual Houston Arrows Charities Golf Extravaganza at Cypresswood Golf Club. All the proceeds benefit the Muscular Dystrophy Association and Houston Arrows Charities. 
Are you going to make it out to it? I haven't been invited. Uh, I've just invited you. Okay. Well, I think you better talk with David Taglarino first. I'll give him a call after the game tonight, but I think he'll let us play. I hope. <laughs> notice, notice me holding my breath. Here's a puck put up the boards. Definitely holding my breath here. What a game it's been. Still scoreless. 7.29 to go in the third. Yo, back out of center. Brought it in off sides. And play is whistled down. And the Arrows return to the summit next Friday at 7 o'clock as they take on the San Antonio Dragon. That's, by the way, Mardi Gras night at the summit. But even that said, uh, when these two teams get together, a lot of fireworks. Well, always the San Antonio Dragons, a very physical hockey team. They're leading the IHL in penalty minutes. And Jeff Brubaker, their head coach, has done a great job, just as Dave Tippett with this Arrow squad has done a terrific job all year. And tonight's no exception. He's trying to mix up the lines. He's trying to find a combination that will enable his Arrow team to get that one goal. Here's the puck back. Gordon Deneen is back. Deneen in his own end. The pass for Jimmy Dowd. He'll move out at center. Shovel the puck in. Jakes is back to play. Jakes over skating. Dowd came firing in there. Balasevic turned the puck around. It's up to center. Knifed into the Grizzly zone. And now it is Gordon Deneen who gathered in the puck. Put it up ice for Jimmy Dowd. He'll fire the puck in arrow territory. And Shabbat there again. Under seven to play in the third. No score. Balasevic, a hard hit from Sharples. Balasevic got the puck back, had to wait for Stoops to come on sides, and there's a whistle. Offsides is the call. And I gotta send it down now to the Arrows bench and Rob Dobson. Dobber, what are the chances Monday we can get you to go into the hot tub and do the game from there? <laughs> there's not enough water. <laughs> Wouldn't you love to do a game down there? Get the big frame in there, he may not want to get out. <laughs> Talk a little bit about this game. It's, it's like you said, no team wants to make a mistake, but it's like you guys are playing it smart right now. Well, again, Adam, I think both teams realize the importance of these next few games, and it's, it's typical playoff hockey. You know, there's not a lot of scoring chances, and when they are, you see great goaltending, and it's going to take one mistake by one team to, you know, let the other team capitalize in order to win the game. It, it's typical, tight last part of the season kind of hard. Puck is in the Grizzly zone. Conroy and that shot away and it's back out at center. Kaminsky across the line. Ooh, that was nearly offside but a, a good non-call. Kaminsky down the boards looking for levers. Kaminsky scooped it down too hard for levers to handle and the puck put to the boards by Mark Freer and down the ice it'll go. To play it is Gordon Denny. No icing, as they say. The Grizzlies could have played it. And the puck is controlled by Deneen. Shoveled it into Arrow territory. Jakes is back. He shot it. It was shot in, and Frederick Shabbat is there to hold on to it. Well, it's a critical hockey game, Troy Gamble. When you look at the Southwest Division standings, you can see Phoenix. And I only mentioned Phoenix because the Arrows play them tomorrow. And they're going to be a team to be reckoned with. We saw that Wednesday. But right now, Houston, two points back of Utah and Las Vegas. Las Vegas is at Manitoba tonight. I have not heard an update yet out of that game, but uh, a win tonight by the Euros, and they would at least climb past the Utah Grizzlies. And the one good thing about that also, Adam, is Utah has four games in hand on the Arrows. They've played four more games than the Arrows, so that would be a huge two-point swing for the Arrows if they can win it in regulation. This is a critical weekend. I mean, if, if the Arrows could come away with four out of a possible six. It'd be a, a successful weekend. Uh, no question, Dave Tippett wants all six. I think everybody in the blue wants all six, but that is gonna be a very difficult task. Here's a shot by Deneen, blocker save made by Shabbat. Mark Lamb moved it up the boards, shot away. Here's a chance, Ray Whitney getting set. That's pushed away, and it's Whitney that overskated it. And LaRose skates to center. Mark Lamb across the line, trying to move in, hits the brakes, looks in front. The shot went off a leg. MacArthur comes out to play it, put it to the board. Miller working over Mark Lamb pretty good, and the puck shot the center. Chris Taylor across the line with Whitney. Whitney going to the net, a pass behind him. Boy, play really getting scrambly. Bodies flying all over the place. Whitney shakes a check off in the arrow end. Back to the line, Messier. Winding with a drive, wide of the net. Whitney gathered it in the circle. Makes his move around Townsend. It's poked in front, the shot, Shabbat the save. And Shabbat will dive for it. And he will hold on. 
What a terrific save by Frederick Shabbat going down low. Ray Whitney all over the ice. I wish I, wish I had a dime for every time you've mentioned Ray Whitney tonight. I'd be a rich man, and that's just a mismatch. He was on Graham Townsend, the bigger man, the quicker. Ray Whitney all over Graham Townsend. Graham Townsend did a good job forcing him, staying with him tight. And then the sweep shot from No, and he had nowhere to go with it as Frederick Shabbat pounded on the loose puck. What a great play all around by No and Frederick Shabbat. 29 saves for Frederick Shabbat, but you know, there's a lot of similarities between the Arrow situation and the Grizzlies. Butch Goring tonight has now dressed 55 different guys in a Grizzly sweater. A lot of it attributed, attributed to Mike Milbury in the uh, general manager head coaching role of the New York Islander. Leaves him short-handed, and he's had to bring guys up. Sometimes the shot goes over and out of play. Sometimes with no notice. There's been times this year when after a pregame skate, Butch Goring finds out that a guy's been called up to the Islanders. He has nobody he can get here in time. Well, uh, I've heard through the grapevine that between 13 and 14 guys, they, times they have not even dressed 18 skaters. Yeah, yeah. Because what happens is they'll have their pregame meal, they'll be on the road. Millberry might call up two players. And you just do not have time to bring in another player for your squad. And you have no say either. You can't say, well, I need him. No, Butch Goring has no say. Millberry wants one of his contracted guys. He's going to take him. Well, everyone's talked about the job that Dave Tippett has done, especially considering that they've had 5D, now six of you include Lauren Knopf, but for the most part, 5D. You talk about the job Tippett has done. I think a lot of credit goes to the guy on the other side of the bench from him, Butch Goring, with, with the troops he's had to work with. And also with two Turner Cup rings on his fingers. Oh, by the way, uh, I, I'm blinded by the light every time I see him staring at his finger. Here's a pass out at center. Makota across the line. The shot right on. Shabbat to save. He will dive on top of it. And now, once again, everybody getting into it. Mick Makota in there. Jim Dowd in the middle of it. Arrows all locked up. Rowenka looking in there. And we will sort everything out when we return. 4.44 to go in the third. Yeah, you got it. We're still scoreless. Mick Makota with the blistering drive on Frederick Shabbat. It might have almost been tipped by the defenseman, Arrows defenseman, Frederick Shabbat, pounded on it, gave a little sweep of his stick, and then it carried on into the corner with a little physical play, and obviously Mick Vakoda was going to have his nose in there. How concerned could Dave Tippett be with this stat? 11-0 in the third period, shots on goal. Well, he'll be concerned if they don't get a shot, but he would not be concerned if they get one shot and score, <laughs> and then he wouldn't care. Yeah, you can't. I'm going to go out on a limb. If the Arrows don't get a shot on goal, they won't win it in the third. That's that simple. I, I, unbelievable. Yeah. I'm really going out on a line here. It, it's the new me. It's, it's the new me, Troy. Wow. Here's a puck back out at center ice. And Sharple's going back. Don't look at me like that, Troy, as the puck goes down the ice. Very sensitive. Out of the net, Frederick Shabbat put it to the corner. Freer trying to move it out. Levers chased him down, but there was Jakes. Steve Jakes behind his net. Oh, had trouble with it. Sometimes when he moves with that puck, it puts a big lump in your throat, and he was tied up and lost the puck. Kaminsky trying to move in. That's knifed away by Freer. Kaminsky looking in front, back to the line. Here is Denny getting set. The shot, score! of outstanding scoreless hockey. And through a screen, it's Captain Deneen, and it's 1-0 Utah. Well, he's just throwing it on the net. O'Brien in front, Hurlbutt in front. Frederick Shabbat could not find the loose puck. Deneen, great veteran play, realizing there's tons of traffic. And look at Butch Gorin giving it the fist pump. Mick Fakoda high-fiving no. And that bench is jumping with joy. Is a great play by the veteran, Gord Denis. So now with 3.45 left, all of a sudden the arrows have to press. Still though, not a shot on goal. And, well, you have to credit this Grizzly hockey team. They have given the arrows nothing. 
puck put to the boards. It's out at center. Whitney tried to roll it ahead. It's picked away by LaRose. He got it into the Utah end. LaRose moving down, sharp angle shot, missed badly. Behind the net, Lamb digs it out. Scooped it for Bill Bowler. Bowler hemmed in by Sharples. Lamb is there. Mark Lamb put it down low. It's out at center in the length of the ice. They will say no icing. Lamb screaming at the line and saying he couldn't play it. And it should have been an icing call. And Lamb won't get the break. Now the puck banked to center ice. Here come the arrows. Bowler cross ice pass. Too hard for Freer. Freer had a chase to the boards with under three minutes to go. Third period is Gordy Deneen has notched his second goal of the season. Puck out at center, a delayed penalty coming to the Grizzlies. And there's the call as the whistle is sounded. A hooking minor, a latch, last ditch attempt. Mark Lamb still screaming at the linesman. And I'll tell you what, they better just keep their cool. They're gonna get a power play here. Or are they? I thought the penalty was coming to on the arrows. I thought it was on the Grizzlies. And that's why they were yelling, they were furious. And Al Conroy, well, Mike Curlbutt is going to the box, excuse me. And I believe that was behind the play and they were absolutely furious. Well, Tippett is just going berserk on the bench and he's got every right to be. Well, Mike Curlbutt against the boards here, ends up taking a shot to the head and then that is why the player got by him, is he took a shot in the back of the head. Grizzly player jumps right and he gives him the hook. Well, there have been some phantom calls, but this ghost call may end up biting the arrows because now they've got to think about shorthanded because two minutes are up on the board to Hurl, but with 2.45 left. So the Grizzlies go on the power play and it's Gordon Denise, thus far the hero tonight. Deneen scooped the puck to center ice, Sharples across the line. Sharples steered it over for Jim Dowd, pulls up along the boards, winds it down for Taylor. Taylor was there, pass intercepted, here come the arrows, oh, Conroy overskated it. Arrows have seven short-handed goals this year. They're gonna need an eighth. Well, they just need to get a shot. They have to get a shot on goal. Still, no shots on goal. That has never happened in arrow history. Pass over, Dowd shooting, wider than that. Came back to the line. Messier will hold at the point. He's played a strong game. Pass came down. Dowd turning. Back to the line. Sharples. The wrist shot. Shabbat stopped. The rebound. Score! shot from the point from Sharples. Freddie Shabbat cannot find the rebound. Ray Whitney does. Puts it in the empty net. He's had a whale of a game tonight and he's rewarded. But it's the long shot from the point. The big rebound. Freddie Shabbat cannot find it. It's up in his midsection. And Ray Whitney is not going to miss the empty net. And he blasts it in past Frederick Shabbat who had no idea where the rebound went. So Ray Whitney is seventh of the season with a minute 57 to go and it will take a miracle now, but you know what? The arrows have shown they can do it, but it's gonna be tough. Bowler with you and Townsend. Hurl, but shakes defensively. And off the draw, Messier scooped it back. Sharples is there. Ray Whitney. Goal is seventh of the year, a power play goal. One of five, the Grizzlies go on the power play. Bowler in after, we'll keep an eye on Freddie Shabbat. He may come out sooner than you think. Pearl, but rolled it down, Kaminsky got it away, and it's picked up and shot into the arrow end. Shabbat out of the net, flings it along the wall. Puck down, and here is Jim Dowd, looks in, he centered, and it skipped over Whitney. Another drive, and Shabbat blocked it. Still, the arrows have generated nothing offensively in this third period. And, and the they're trailing to nothing. And the Grizzlies have done a terrific job down low with their four check all over the arrows. Shots are now 12 nothing unofficially in this third period. Here's me, the drive right on it. There is the first shot on goal with 
19 minutes gone in the period. Clock, clock back. Lord Knopf turned it around. Knopf down at center. We'll keep an eye on Shabbat. Here is Knopf down the right side. Puck comes down. 42 seconds left. And the puck shot down. Is it icing if Alamont gets there? That might mean the end of Freddie Shabbat. Icing the call and will bring the face off into the Grizzly end. And that should be the end of Freddie Shabbat. And Adam, after the Grizzlies scored that second goal, Mark Lamb banged his stick. He was yelling at the official. He was given a 10-minute misconduct, so he is out of the game. He'll be able to play in the next game, obviously, but that even makes it more tougher when Mark Lamb is out of the game and Dave Tippett is going to take a timeout, try to work a play, and, you know, ever since that first goal went in, the long shot from Gord Deneen, the arrows have really been scrambling around and Dave Tippett calling a timeout. He'll get on that marker board, try to draw up a play that they can score very quickly as they need though two tallies, not just one. Yeah, and we, we saw the, uh, the arrows several times this year when they're down, they're able to knife their way back into this hockey game. Uh, you know, whenever you talk about that, uh, Darcy Rowenka comes to mind. The bad news is, is that 10-minute misconduct to Mark Lamb, he's out of the hockey game, so he's usually an integral part in this last-minute offense. Well, he's the guy who feeds Rowenka for the one-timer, and he feeds it so soft, but Darcy Rowenka, if he does get it, he will not be receiving it from Mark Lamb. So they're getting ready quickly, 7,724 tonight, and they have been in this hockey game from the start. Let's quickly get an update on what's going to happen. Dauber, what's taking place? Andy Wasatch from Harvard Supermarket. Dauber. Oh, I lost my microphone. Oh. No, I was just talking to Freddie there. I, I didn't get a chance to hear what Dave's want. I think this is just a chance. Hopefully get in here with about 35 seconds left. Billy Adam, when we get to the play here with the goalie out, it's the same play every time. The most important part is the draw to get it back, have guys go to the net and try to create an open shot for the point. Anything can happen in 35 seconds, so it's not over quite yet. Thanks, Dauber. What a trooper Dauber was getting his mic back. Wow, unbelievable. All right, face off right side of MacArthur. Bowler Conroy, Freer LaRose, and a hurl bunt with Werwinka. The net is empty. Off the draw, Sharples. He won it, and it's down the ice. In after it, Taylor, if he gets there, it negates the icing, he does. Center Whitney steered it in front. 25 seconds to go. Two nothing, Grizzlies lead it. Bowler the drive, and chase down Conroy, but no, the Grizzlies got there, and that'll bring Freddie Shabbat back into the hockey game as the faceoff will be brought back into the arrow end. And the tempers of the arrows are flaring. You know, Al Conroy felt that he got to that puck. Oh, he's been yelling at the linesman and with a physical game and a, a very well played game. You know, Frederick Shabbat played well. The Arrows played very well defensively. They just could not generate enough offense, you know? And, and there's a couple of reasons though, Adam. You gotta give credit to the Grizzlies. Their four check and work ethic was excellent. And their defensive zone coverage, when the Arrows did get it deep, they, they picked, they held, and they were able to get the puck out of their zone. Well, when it's all said and done, one shot on goal in this period, five only in the first period, it's not going to get it done for you against a talented team such as the Utah Grizzlies, and the Arrows net becomes dislodged, and they'll bring a faceoff out at center ice. Especially with MacArthur playing very well. You know, he's playing confident. You know, Butch Scoring has given him the puck now and said, Mark, if you keep winning, you're going to keep playing. That's why he's, this is his fourth start in a row. So he's just gonna keep on carrying the workload. That's one thing about Butch Goring. When he feels he has a hot goaltender, he stays with them. You know that firsthand. Well, yeah, yeah, I had the opportunity when I played for Butch, I was there for 68 games, I played 67. You would know. Denny off the draw, back to his blue, but with five seconds left. It's all moot now. The Arrows played their hearts out, but just couldn't get the offense going in this one. For the second time this season, the Arrows are shut out. But boy, what a game tonight. It really was the emotion. And I think Rob Dobson said it the best tonight. Playoff hockey. And uh, with the way that this game went tonight, the Arrows fans should be very excited about this Arrow hockey team and the playoff type of hockey that they're playing. Arrows pick up their 20th defeat of the season. 
Utah gets their 26th win of the year. It's time for a high-low scoring summary. Gord Deneen at 16.08 broke the scoreless tie. Miller and Kaminsky getting the assists. And then with seconds remaining, well, actually two minutes remaining, Ray Whitney, seventh of the year, power play goal, put it out of reach. Sharples endowed, getting the assist, and the Grizzlies win it by a score of two to nothing. When Troy Gamble and I return, we will wrap things up. Two nothing, the Grizzlies win it. Shut out the Houston Arrows, two nothing, and. Uh, I guess Troy Gamble, when it is all said and done, again, it comes down to the offense, and uh, the Arrows couldn't get it done tonight. Well, especially in the third period. In the first period, they only had the five shots. In the third period, they do not get a shot until almost two minutes left, and they just need to find a way to generate more offense. Whatever it takes, Dave Tippett is going to have to find a way to get the puck deep and get better offensive chances. Time for our Whataburger play of the game, brought to you by Whataburger, the homegrown Texas taste. 1950, and here's the goal by Gordon Denis. Well, Gordon Denis just throws it on the net. It's a big screen in front of Freddie Shabbat. But way before that, Steve Jakes had a chance to get the puck out. And they bobbled up in his feet a little bit. They do not get it out. It ends up in their night, and that was a backbreaker. All right, the Arrows return to the summit to take on the San Antonio Dragons next Friday at 7 o'clock. Tickets are available 629-3700. And they're back on television, KNWS, right here at the Delta Center. The Arrows and the Utah Grizzlies. The final score tonight from the Delta Center, the Utah Grizzlies two, Houston Arrows nothing. Thanks for joining us, good night.